Dangerous to go alone 23. My name is Cater and I am joined here today by Quark. Hello, and we will be seeing two teams first round meta meta zones rather. Yes, we are going to be seeing the Cracked Crabs versus the Gaming Gamers. And I do believe the Gaming Gamers, uh, that name was requested last season. And then, you know, we got enough teams, we got enough people signed up to make a G team. So here we are, we now have the Gaming Gamers. <laughs> yes, and as much as that name is uh, kind of repetitive, it makes it's a very nice name. Um, we like all the alliterative yeah. names that we have here at It's Dangerous to Go Alone. And what uh, are your yeah, thoughts about this first match? They are always a joy to see. So yeah, like you mentioned, our first map here is going to be uh, Zones on Monte Maria. This one's a double zone map, so instead of having one large zone in the middle of the stage, you have those two zones positioned on opposite sides of the giant pole in the middle. It makes it a little bit harder to, to access the other zone. You know, what do you think both teams are, are really going to have to do here pretty much in order to win? We first we have to get in and cap both zones, which is pretty hard, especially given that your opponents can control a lot of area from bunker and from the mast area, and you have to go around the mast on the other side to get to the opposite zone, which can often be a headache, if there's even one enemy player guarding that choke point. And after that, oh, they're yeah. going to have to lock out on this map, which is difficult if you don't cover the ledges properly, because your opponents can easily drop back in and pressure you out of at least one zone so you may not get a penalty but you won't be able to score points for some time yeah definitely there's a lot of ways to get back into monta honestly you have straight down the middle you have also the top bunkers and top mid which can really be good for area control like you said they give anchors a place to set up and have pretty much sight of the entire part of mid there you also have ways on left and right you know you have that that cut jump over over a, a, a gap that you can get into mid just directly from and then you can also go the long way on right and be up top to drop so so there's a lot of different ways you can get back into mid which makes it like you said a little bit more difficult to lock out but this map is also pretty cool in the fact that it has a lot of those tight spaces you know you have the openness of mid but then in street and elbow those are more like tight alleyways so if you get caught in there people can just kind of just jump on you from the top which is what i really like about this map you know you've got a little bit of variety in the different types of spaces that you see in it yeah um, it's gonna be a fun map if anyone brings out a bucket because it's gonna really help you oh. control the ledges yeah, Especially machines. Machines, machines. A, yeah, machines definitely good on Monta. As a former player myself, machines really good on flat ground. But also, like you said, it has the the the, the slosher ability to slosh up and over onto ledges. So being able to both control both flat and ledge ground is really really helpful. Yes, and we're going to be waiting on one more team to show up because it took them a bit to get in the lobby, and... It's okay, it happens. Hopefully we'll be starting <laughs> soon. Yes, it happens. And I believe, yeah. at least according to one of the members of the Cracked Crabs, that one of them was part of the winning team last time. Yes, so Sir Shams. I have Shams no way to confirm that. <laughs> Sir Shams, uh, they have the, the season's winner role. The oh, yes. Sir Shams has requested for us to mention that they were on the winning team, which is no small feat. It <laughs> Winning this There's tournament the does a take a lot of skill. Ago. Oh my goodness! <laughs> yeah, I suppose I am. I, I won, what, was it January or December? I don't remember which January. one. January. Mm, December. 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 Okay. December, same difference. But yeah, so we are going to be seeing a, a previous winner. Of perhaps that plays into it a little bit now. Um. So... Just a little bit more before we go on, as in comps, I know we did uh, discuss that we're going to be seeing possibly sloshers because Monta's a good map for them. And then of course you're going to see the, the armor. Do you expect to see um, anything in the way of like longer range weapons like anchors? I mean, perhaps someone will bring out a fire for new e-leader in um, recognition of dudes uh, everyone play charger and solo queue weekends. <laughs> but I am not sure and I can't say because I don't really know these people. I believe Amber's a support player, but no one else ever. I don't recognize anyone else here. But yeah, they knows? are. They could a fire fit or something if they want. A yeah, long range true. weapon with a lot of painting ability. 
Yeah, Firefin with the wall uh, lets it position a little bit more aggressively than other chargers because they have that for protection. And then the bomb rush, the suction bomb rush is so good for your area control, especially in the zones where you can just throw it onto the zone and then just force people out of it. So there's a reason why, it, that's the reason why it's such oh. a common pick in zones. Oh? Oh, uh, no, no, my, uh... Uh, OBS okay. Ninja briefly committed night, sorry. I... <laughs> but yeah, yes. that's uh, one of the reasons why it's such a common pick. And I mean, we were talking about buckets earlier. I would not be surprised to see an Explo if any of these uh, members here play Explosure. Explo's got huge paint output and the baller on it really just gives it a second life. Especially with Manta being able to sit up on bunker and use those curved sloshes. Because the zones on Manta are really small, so just a couple of sloshes from an Explosure can neutralize or even cap it. Um, we are very quickly, 10 seconds left, going to be heading into the match, and so honestly, I'm just excited to see what these teams bring for the first set here. And we will be loading in right now. Oh, it's like a couple of interesting picks. There is that explosher that I mentioned, but we are interestingly enough, I believe that is carbons, if I'm not mistaken, out of both of the teams, which is something we didn't mention. But carbon really does have that's not a carbon, that's a regular roller. Uh, I can't see, but anyways, either way, rollers uh, do also have the ability to swing up and over ledges as well. To, so as well as having those curling bonds and the splash down for moving and paint output. So I'm so I think it's also a really nice pick and although one that I did not think about, I'm really happy to see it out. Yes, and we have Green briefly taking an early almost getting an early cap, but uh aren't the orange team, which is uh cracks crowd managed to hold on. Even though the bubbles are coming out on zone, the and the foil is going for some picks, but the bubbles get nothing and the foil is quickly sh shut down and Cracked crowds have specials online and they're ready to push up without painting for armor. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, so we do see specials online out of both teams. 4v4 situation yet again. It looks like both teams are just kind of trying to play it safe here. Not a huge lockout going on, but also not pushing it quite yet. We see the auto bomb rush, I believe, does get popped. And so now we are seeing them making a break for mid with the armor coming out as well, trying to push back in, trying to get that cap in order to stop the tick down of the timer. But they do not get it. They go two down, three down, actually. <laughs> no, I... Roller be roller. Ah, yes, the roller fights. <laughs> you see one of the rollers on top mid, just such a good vantage point, honestly, using just all of that ink output to keep the zone neutral, waiting for their team to come and back them up here. Yes, I'm impressed they managed to keep the zone as long as they did with the carbon, but it's not like it's a dynamo, you can't control all them much turf with the splits. Yeah, and yet they managed to do that. You see them running up, getting a pick, doing what Carbon does best, just catching people by surprise. They're looking for another right here. Don't quite... Actually, they do get it. <laughs> they uh, just uh, managed to catch that Explosher right by surprise, and now the tables have turned as we see the, the penalty is... Com they don't even remember what they have. Well, their timer is ticking down either way and quickly heading up, although 29 does seem like a good lead. It could very well be overwritten if they're not careful about it. And oh, a very nice double out of the Squiffer here, just as I say that. Yes, yeah, so and now Gaming Gamers is forced, or yeah, it's Gaming Gamers is forced two down. The Inkjet's coming out from the side of Cracked Crowd. Oh, that's Gaming Gamers, the Inkjet coming out. Apologies. And the Inkjet is shut down by the Foil Squeezer, which is going to try to push in. They've got the bubbles, they've got armor and bomb mark as well. They can push in, but they're gonna need to move quick before the penalty gets taken down to the side of Cracked Crowd. Yeah, Wait, three no, specials online. Oh no. Uh, sorry. Three specials online, and they're using those to the best of their ability. We're seeing the bubbles come out here from the squeezer, using them as shields. Unfortunately, they do get taken down by that cheeky little expo just around the bubbles. Now, using that baller right into the middle of the zone to take that, and somehow gets a pick out of that too, right back on their perch up on bunker to watch over those zones. The expo doing such a good job with just using everything in their toolkit to help their team and to put out paint on the zones. They're playing very nicely, and their penalty is is, is almost gone too. Ten and counting, as um, 
And the other team is desperately trying to get back into bed. We see a baller coming out of the other Nautilus instead of going for the zone, going directly for a pick there. Unfortunately, does not get it as uh, the, the person they were chasing down jumps out and then they just get fired down. So that is one down for their team. And the penalty is completely gone. Timer's ticking down 15 and counting. And there's just been, been I mean, trying to fight for the zone, but really they just don't have the resources that they need as it, it just keeps going and going. Yes, and it looks like the side of gaming or of cracked crowds of it did actually start to feed, and that baller was that that the baller not the baller was really miscalculated. Like they couldn't get zone with it, and they didn't get any picks off of it. And their team really went one in one on one with no other special support, and not ever one of the members up. So it made sense that they all went down. But they seem to have managed to recover that have recovered actually, and do get the zone and keep the. AO from occurring, but they've got a long way to go, and they're yeah. already being forced back and struggling for that zone. That was a really, really nice save out of the squeezer, though. I mean, using all, using the bombs, using the bubbles, and then just paging over that zone. They knew they knew that they needed to cap the zone just one time in order to keep the KO from occurring, and that's exactly what they did. Now with that penalty of 50, 51, excuse me, um, and the and that they have control of the zone. They can relax a little bit, but they can't relax too much as we are going into the last five seconds of our game. This means that overtime will be faced. They, they've got lots of curve control. They're in a good spot right now, but they need to keep on getting the picks. They need to not die. They need to have those specials, and they need to keep the zones for 40 more ticks of the timer. Can they do it? We will see. It doesn't look like going to be able to. They're getting pushed back to the Xbox. The game just coming out. The carbon does get a pick, that ball is going to come out and kill them, and that's oh, the game. And, yeah, that is the game. Really, really good attempt at an overtime push there, but unfortunately going two down, and it just was not enough to save them from that end of the game baller there. But still, a very nice showing out of both of these teams here. Yes, and the carbon putting in a lot of work, getting 12 kills. An impressive 17 coming out of uh, Gaming Gamers Zap. Oh yeah, definitely. All right, so for our next map, looks like we are going to be heading into Rainmaker on Wahoo World, which is one of those really everything goes maps for me. Wahoo doesn't seem to heavily favor anything over anything else. And so I'm I'm just honestly excited to see what, what, what teams are going to be bringing out here. Cause you know, I, I've seen pretty much everything get pulled out on this stage and pretty much anything can work if you've got it in the right hands. Yes, but though, in contrast to the rather varied weapons you can play this map, there's going to be very limited options to push. It's either you go around the long way, and go left, and go around this pedestal, or you take the unankable. And either way, you're going to be incredibly exposed trying to push the Rainmaker first, you've been taken down for above, or on the unankable, you're unable to move very fast, making you an easy target to pick off. And either way, the choke points are going to make it very difficult to push on this map without a wall, a wipe, or some bubbles. Yeah, definitely. I mean, the fact that there's only really one side that you can approach the pedestal from on this map makes the pushing options very, very limited and very predictable. So I'm anticipating that these teams are likely going to have to get a three down or a wipe situation in order to get a really big amount of points on the board. You know, Rainmaker games tend to be pretty high scoring and back and forth, but on a map like Wahoo, they can also be low scoring as both teams keep their defense up and really just try and wait for that one big opening that they need. In Rainmaker, if you let yourself slip up one time, that can just be the end of the game for you. Yeah, so I definitely wouldn't be surprised to see the baller or bubble weapons coming out this match again, because they'll help a lot in trying to get to that choke point if there's a baller or bubbles there too block incoming shots and allow the Rainmaker to get farther than they normally would have. Should be very annoying if no one has Object Shredder. Oh, definitely. You know, shield, <laughs> things that can shield and tank damage like that are so useful in Rainmaker. You know, that's why sometimes you see Brellas get pulled off because you can, pulled out, excuse me, because you can launch that shield and then just have the Rainmaker swim inside the shield. But with things like Ballers, Bubble, and Shield, bombs will, ex lethal bombs will explode immediately upon contact with it. So if you're not careful and you're a little bit too far ahead of it, you can just, you can just immediately die to a bomb explosion. You know, I've had it, I've had it happen to me and I've done it to other people. So that could spell uh, an unfortunate end to a push there. We do see a little Be bit of- <laughs> A 
Oh, you know me too well. I really like seeing Siege Edge, but that's only because I am a player of the weapon. Siege Edge with its Stingray spam capabilities can really be vital to a team as Ray is so good at stopping Rainmaker pushes. You know, we, we still also see the Squeezer coming out on that same team. And then on the side of the gaming gamers, a Slosher Deco coming out for those ballers that you mentioned as well as a Ray, the, the Splier Scope, which does have Stingray, so we do see Stingray on both sides. Yes, we've also got a CDS on both sides, which is an interesting pick, but the rain's gonna help a lot of the like, if you clear out something up. And that Junior, I don't know if you saw their build, but they're running at least three mains of Ink Saber subs, so we're gonna be seeing a lot of bombs coming out, a lot of flat bombs, because three members of the gaming gamers are going to have flat bombs. Yep, lots. <laughs> Very bomb. Oh wait, that's pump. the crack the... stuff. I the yes, totally the crack flipped crack it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, C and G are pretty similar in their tags, unfortunately, so it's a little hard to tell these teams apart, but that's all right. Uh, we have Crack Crabs in the orange and Gaming Gamers in the purple, and hopefully I can remember that for the rest of this match. But we do see um, a quick push to uh, 58 out of the Gaming Gamers. Unfortunately, does get taken out a little bit early and so it is going to be the Cracked Crabs trying to make a push of their own. Unfortunately, their junior does go down. Actually, it's one... So they go three down! <laughs> the Squeezer does get another pick before getting taken out, but that is a delayed wipe on the side of the Cracked Crabs. And so Gaming Gamers is going to take this and run, or I guess they're going to take it and, well, swim. <laughs> um, but immediately picking up the Raymaker and trying to capitalize on this opportunity. Good on them. You see the Raymaker getting pelted by all of those splat bombs that we talked about earlier. That's such a bomb heavy comp. Trying to take an opposite route, but here comes the Ray from the C Jet. Trying, trying to shut down the push. They, it does. Not before they get to 43 though. And they go three down. So this is going to enable. Uh, I've already forgotten which team is which. It's going to enable gaming gamers to continue their push if they so desire. Yes, yeah, so they are going to be unable to get any closer to the main maker because Crab Crab is going to lay down those bombs and start shooting everywhere, forcing the, the CDS back. They're popping rain though, so Crab Crab is going to have to wait for the reset and push back in mid. But they have three specials, but they don't have to. And they do pick up the rain maker. They've got the ray coming out, but they lost the rain maker actually. I can't. The and the sting ray is coming out, and that's going to allow Crab Crab to try again to push back in. They are picking up the rain maker. And yep. they are moving it left, but they immediately lose it yet again. Yeah, just all of these bombs with, the, you know, when you have the Raymaker, your movement speed is slowed down, so it makes it a lot harder to avoid bombs, especially ones that explode so quickly as a rolled splat bomb. So, Cracked Crabs are really, really trying here, but just the... the actually, they are the ones with the bomb comp. I, I cannot <laughs> comprehend, but yes. Um, movement speed is slowed with the Rainmaker, so it makes it a lot harder to avoid things like Ray and bombs when they're getting completely thrown at you, which is why having the Rainmaker is like having a very large kick me sign on your forehead. We see uh, Cracked Crabs again trying to make another push, but just getting stopped by the amazing defense that Gaming Gamers is laying down here as we head into the last minute and 30 seconds of our match. Yes, and I think Cracked Crabs is just playing too fast too fast and too offensively once they get the Rainmaker. Because they've been charging the same way, that's two or three times now. And every time they've just been shut down, and they haven't tried to change anything, they've just thought, okay, this is the time, we'll get through this time, and they get stuck in the same place on the ankle again, again. And that's a Ooh. really nice pick with the Rainmaker coming out from the side of Gaming Gamers. Yeah, such and a they nice- They do have the special mind, they've got one more chance, but the Stingray's gonna come in and we have a Stingray fight! Woo! Stingray fight! <laughs> Looks like- the um, the C it looks like it ends victor uh, ends in victory for gaming gamers as that C jet does go down last minute of the match and it looks like gaming gamers although they're looking for another push kind of playing it safer you know they know that they have the lead they don't want to give up too much control but oh my goodness they can they go full that's a full wipe on the side of gaming gamers this is exactly the opportunity that crack crabs need they need to push up now they need to get turf they need to get special they have to special online the ray and the rain a nice rainmaker pick on the slosher deco and the the, the the bridges are coming out to you see it this way coming out this is the last ditch push that they need and they're gonna get it they're gonna get it they're gonna get all the way down to 20 something 28 and the rain's gonna come out so they are three down the seat needs to back up and get their ray ready in order to stop the next push that's definitely gonna come out so the rain's coming out really early for the side of gaming gamers which is gonna let them get back in the mid but they're not gonna have it when they try to push and the armor's already ready on the side of Cracks, crabs, and 
See, just looking like they're pretty close to Ray. It's gonna. This, uh, Gaming Gamer is going one down. The armor's coming out for the side of Karkov. The Sims Ray's coming out on the side of Here comes for the Ray. And the Rainmaker's gonna manage to dodge, but that's it, and they're gonna take game two. Yeah, you saw all those splat bombs just be flung out onto mid, <laughs> directed at the Rainmaker close to the end of that game. Just that such chip dammy, I can't talk, chip damage heavy comp really, really helping them there. I mean, you know, they got the, the open window that they need that wipe and they took it and they swam and they did exactly what they needed to do. So amazing opportunity taking there out of the, the cracked crabs, I believe. Yes, and I believe that makes the set 1-1, one, one, though I honestly forgot who won the first game. <laughs> uh, my goldfish memory cannot help you there, unfortunately. But it, <laughs> either way, it has been a very good set overall. For our final for our final map, we are going to be going to Clam Blitz on New Albacore Hotel, which is honestly an entirely different beast um, in, in just both structure of the stage and the way the mode has to be played. Yes, and this is going to be a very interesting map to see how teams try to push, because the only options are going the long way around left or right, which exposes you to oh, giving to a lot of enemy fire unless your opponents get take plenty of time to organize their defense, or going straight through the middle, which is even harder to get through without getting shot unless we see bubbles again. Oh yeah, I very much expect the foil squeezer to stay. We've seen it in the past two matches and it's got bubbles and bomb and extremely long range which makes it great on Albacore. You know, you have those those really long rates where if you have range you're at a huge advantage. Yes, and given what we've seen before I wouldn't be surprised to see the charger come back out. I wouldn't be surprised to see the slosher deco come out, out but they may switch the nautilus since splatlings are so good here when you can move around the grace. And if they oh, have yeah. the baller again, that'll help them a lot, counter pushing and pushing. Yeah, definitely. Baller's a really nice special to have here, especially because the area around the basket is just so small. Like if you get trapped in a corner there, you can very easily be killed if you're not if you're not careful about it. So the baller explosion just inks and controls so much of that area under clam clam basket. I almost said clam blasket. But yeah, it's it's a nice special to have around. I've I've uh, played it on Clam Albacore, I've played with it, and so, you know, I, I would not be surprised to see either Not47 or Slosher Decker coming back. Yes, and... I don't think we'll see any more rollers because of the way the map is shaped and how hard it is to push, but I'm not sure, we should be starting right about now. Yep, definitely. Albacore's quite the long map too, if you're if you're looking at it from a width angle. So there's a small chance Seajet comes back if they want to keep playing into that Stingray, the the Stingray spam. But it, it's not guaranteed, so we will just have to see. And we ooh. have a remix coming out, and that's a new Squiffer, so we do see that baller. Got a yeah. K Pro and a K Gal as well, which gives them a double Booyah comp, which is going to make it. If they can get those Booyahs online, it's going to let them push really effectively. And it's oh, yeah. so much area I'm trying to push. And we do have the squeezer coming out from the side of cracked crabs, which will let them push in with those bubbles, which is gonna help a lot. Yep, capers on both sides. Um capers on both sides, so we do see Booyab on both sides. And the the wall from there the egg out. Oh aren't capers on both sides. Oh there are not capers on both sides. I apologize. I can't uh I can't what what is I can't see. But um <laughs> I, but there are booyahs on both sides, you know, with the heavy remix is the one they do have booyah. So you see the cake the cake out here, over here getting a, a couple of good picks. But while they were occupied, there's two power clams right now on the side of crack, uh, crabs, and they do have decent mid control, although um getting forced into a fight here as the zap uh, steps up and, and puts puts pressure on them, unfortunately going down to a well-placed bubble blower on the side of the squeezer, who then goes down to a well-placed booyah bomb. It's just, people are going down left and right here in the first minute or so of this game. Yes, so gaming gamers retain the advantage. They've got cracked crabs for the most part pushed back into their base. They've got an opening if they uh, have that's to get cracked the crabs off. with the, the advantage there, I believe. No, that's... Is yeah, it? That's gaming. I wait. Okay, the <laughs> tags are kind of blurry on our the, end. Apologies. The tags are the tags are very similar, but I believe that is cracked crabs, unless I am sorely mistaken. With the the three power clamps going in for the push, but one getting getting taken out there. It looks like they're going 
through the right area. They're juggling clams, trying to get close enough to the basket, but unfortunately they go two down and they get one clam in, but the CDS is the last one alive. They get the other one. The, they do get the other one. That's a one full more life. Edition. True. So 57 is a good benchmark to have because it is more, well, it's less, I guess it's less than 60 and 60 is the amount you get from throwing two power clams in so even if um gaming gamers i believe is able to get two power clams in at once they will need to get another small clam in and then another in order to take the lead because ties don't exist in this game um but yes. a very nice first push there um out of i've literally forgotten who is who out of uh <laughs> cracked crabs there um we are heading into the the second half of this match right now and really, again, it's just both teams struggling over mid, struggling over picks. One down on both sides, you see a few specials online, but both teams are just waiting for an opportunity, waiting for a huge advantage in order to make a push happen. Yes, and both teams actually do the same amount of clubs, the same amount of pushes. It's very even at the moment, but the onus is on gaming gamers to make this counter push, and they do go one down, and they're not going to get this push yet, I don't believe. They're going two down as well. It looks like Cracked Crabs, three down, Cracked Crabs is going to try to go for another push. Getting the keg out, they've got the bubbles out, they're gonna get another push. Yeah, and that was a little late it could go one. really far, they've still got the Booyah ready as well. The bubbles are still up. Booyah's coming out, all the way down to 40, they've got more clams. They are getting flanked, which will shut down their push. But they get all the way to 22 before Gaming Gamers encircles them and takes the, and takes the clean up. Yeah, I mean... With one minute and thir less than one minute and thirty seconds left, uh, gaming gamers really has to make a move here. Uh, Crack Crab's got it all the way down to twenty-two, and that's a high bar that they have to clear right now. Armor coming out of the zap to help support their team, help get something ready, and actually they do have a good amount of clams. They have twenty-three. They have cap. They've got that power online. They they are pushing up right now. They just need to retain this advantage. This zap here needs to get picks, and that's exactly what they're gonna do. We see the baller coming in. We see the booyah coming in. Just taking. Two Booyahs coming in, just taking control of that. And so they're gonna get the, the clam in, they're, they're gonna get both clams in, actually. They need more clams to keep this push going, though, and they don't have it, and they've immediately gone three down. Such good defense out of Cracked Crabs here. They just immediately shut Gaming Gamers' push down, and 51 is not going to be able to stand up to the work that Crabs, Cracked Crabs has done earlier in the game. Yes, and Gaming Gamers did a really nice push. So they lost one member going in, and they're, they exhausted Ooh. all their specials just getting in, which kept them from being able to extend the push long enough for them to get enough clams to continue to take the lead. So instead, they were easily encircled by cracked crabs and cleaned up. Yeah, power clam falling into the water for cracked crabs, though. And we, we have 15 seconds left in this game. Uh, Gaming Gamers does have a power clamp, so we are going to be seeing overtime. But they, and they have the baller and they're going to go in, but oh, the well-placed bubbles. And they get the clam in, but they are just already three down. That's a full wipe. And so although overtime has been forced, it's not going to last very long as that is going to be the game for Cracked Crabs. And the set as well. It was a very close game, but in the end, it only took Crack Cubs two pushes, and two pushes. They really had control of almost the entire game, except that one time. Yeah, gaming look at that squeeze! Look at that push. squeezers ka there, just absolutely shredding. <laughs> that will be the set, and that will be a victory for Cracked Crabs, who have proven themselves worthy of their own name. Oh yes, very much so. We are going to be taking a couple minutes break before our uh, round two, so stick around and stay tuned for that. We'll see ya.
Hello everybody and welcome back to It's Dangerous to Go Alone 23. We are now in round two of our group stage, which is play all three. If you are just joining us, I am Cater and I am joined here by Quark. Yes, and we will be seeing the Krusty Krabs versus Funky Finches, and we are going to be starting with Monta Tar. So it's Monta again for the uh, yeah. second round in a row. It is Monta again, except uh, we are in tower control this time, which plays a little bit differently due to the fact that objective actually moves. Wow, it's not static anymore. <laughs> um, so you're gonna be seeing a, a lot of the different areas of this map. You have the openness of mid, but you also have the very cramped, honestly, alleyway-like areas of street and elbow. And if you are not careful, this map can snowball very, very quickly. Yes, and what do you think we're going to see for comps? Ooh, I honestly am wholeheartedly expecting a siege yet. You know, you get the you get the, the ray spam out of it, you get to control those tight areas, because you can always see where the tower is located, even through walls. Um, and I, also, I just like siege yet, so, like, I can hope. Um, but, yeah, and, that, and, and we can also see sloshers, machines. We talked about that last set, but machine which it can it can just control low ground especially with the slight slopes that you see on the left and right of the stage but also it can slosh up and over onto top mid and the bunkers so i am excited to see if we see um weapons like that yes yeah, so i recognize a couple of people inside the crusty crabs aizen and yagi so we're gonna see oh, some I... both of which i believe are midlines and what you're saying see jen i believe yagi is is or was a vjet player so we could see vjet coming out oh yeah I mean, V-Jet, C-Jet, I like the Jet Squelcher, so... Well, we'll be happy if I see either of them, but yeah. Yes, and... We're waiting on one more person to ready up, and then we'll get started with <laughs> very crap. And there that, there that is now. Um, so, like you said, Krusty Krabs versus Funky Finches for the first game... Uh, match... Uh, round two, match one. I, I'm trying to speak here, but yes! Uh, very excited to see what both of these teams decide to pull out here. We see an Explosher. Uh, don't often see ex uh, Explosher outside of zone, so that's quite the interesting pick. But um, honestly, if you're going to do it on any map, Mont is the map to do it on. And then on the side of the Funky Finches, you do see that K-Machine coming out. So, you know, a couple of buckets on either team. Uh, pretty pretty excited to see how those play out. Yes, and we've also got the interesting pick on the side of Krusty Crab of the... Octo Brush Nouveau, which is going to give them beacons and missiles, which will help a lot in moving around the map and applying pressure from distance with the missiles in the tight spaces of this map. Though it's not a pick you see often, though I think I've been seeing a little more recently. And it's definitely going to help a lot getting the team back in, especially if they're pushed, if the ledges are camped, the beacons will help a lot in getting back in if you get uh, pushed back. Oh, definitely. Beacons are great. Oh, so we see a couple of early attempted pushes out of both sides. Right now, I believe it is the Funky Finches in control of the tower, um, and they are pushing it past that first checkpoint already. Charger just riding that tower, and ooh, a very nice pick out of them. That was almost like a trick shot. Um, and they're very quickly heading up on the second checkpoint here, which is in that more t tight, cramped space. Unfortunately, it does go down to the custom Explosher, which Ex Explo has such nice, you know, uh, paint control in just the way that the shots explode on the ground. So it, it's cool to see how that really helps control in those tight areas. We see them trying to keep that push going, but the Octobrush is coming in there, flinging ink all over the tower and shutting it down. And so the Funky Finches goes three down. The Krusty Krabs um, really just shutting that down and preventing more damage that could have been done. Yes, yeah, so it's very impressive how long the Funky Finches stayed alive and the onslaught the Octobrush using the tower very well to heal themselves. And now we've got a 3v2 situations in favor of the Krusty Krabs. They've got a Booyah Bomb. They can set up a push, though they are kind of spread out at the moment, I believe. And the Octobrush is looking for a pick on the end step, isn't going to get it. And they're at the first checkpoint, and they are one down, they're two down, and they're very vulnerable. And the Sniper goes and gets one, and the Explosher is forced to use their Baller just to stay alive and try to put some pressure on, but it looked like it did very much. And then yeah. they will throw a tag out, but they're not going to be able to get much. They pushed the enemy, t the Funky Finches back a little bit, but the Xbox is getting really heavily pressured, it's going to be difficult. 
about this, Rana. Yeah, I'd like to note how when the brush and the zap went down, the explo and the capro on these uh the explo and the capro actually backed up, and like you said, the explo used their baller to stay alive. So that was really good of them. That they 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 didn't go co completely down. All four of them. They waited for their teammates to come and back them up so that they could keep a little bit of control on mid. And so that's that's really good of them knowing when to back up. We see both teams again just fighting for mid. Uh, the ray immediately coming out as soon as the the crusty crabs get on the tower um that's the funky uh, funky finches I, uh, is it is it who is it i don't, yeah, I don't I know I, I, i'm exactly. trying but um yes they're, they're trying to get the tower they don't and because of that ray they are unable to push it past 72 so that's not going that's not just going to work although they do um and they they, they end up just going three down which is going to open the the door for another another push Yes, and the world is doing a really good job sharking. They don't get anything off that that shark, but the splat, the double splash the splashdown's coming out. The double splashdown comp. I just realized that um, coming oh, yeah, out, it zoning the area out. Though the funky finches are wiped, the zap's pushing back in, and the crusty crabs do have another chance to push. They've got a special. Like they're painting for more, but they're gonna need to push quite some distance and get through this narrow choke point with the roller and the machine there. And the zap yeah. is in trouble. Yeah, like you said, that was a delayed wipe on their side, which is going to give uh, the Krusty Krabs the opportunity that they need to push in. Already at 54, so close to that lead. Um, they, they're going to keep this push going uh, with their opponents being one down. They're at that checkpoint now, they just need to stay on it. <laughs> they're, they're, they are one down, but they can keep going just if they can keep the... the all uh, just everybody else off their tails they have five points and counting they are so close to the lead but are they going to get it yep and they, they do they take the lead get it. look we have oncoming clutch to save that two and the points is still behind the funky oh punches popping missiles on them getting in going for a flank and they do manage to trade the machine but not quite get the pick and funky they... Finches are too down, it's gonna be hard for them to counter push right now. Yeah, 15 seconds left. Uh, well, okay, not 15 anymore. <laughs> Five seconds left, and we have the. I literally got yeah, the Funky Finches, the funky question finches. mark. Um, yeah. Making a last ditch overtime push, and they might get it with the Krusty Krabs going three down. That is going to be the they lead taken back for them in overtime. Wow. Lead going one way and then right back the other. Such such a, a, a tense first game to start off this set here. Yes, and wow, this sloshing machine on the side of Funky Pitch is putting a lot of work in getting 16 KA. And I think it was a fairly close game, but I think if anything, the kind of low on bombs comp and the explosion worked a little against crusty crabs in that situation because the it was difficult for them to uh in some situations difficult for the explosher to get picks and to do more than just sloshing generally and they kept getting rushed down and the roller did a really good job of shutting down all their the members of crusty oh wait i'm getting the rollers on their team i'm confused but yeah, unfortunately so. Explosher plays really well off of chip damage, so when that's not present, fortunately that's not- there's there's really not much they can do. We are now going to be going into our second match, which is Splat Zones on Skipper Pavilion. I mean, again, would not would not be surprised to see the Explosher make a reappearance here. Yeah, I think we'll definitely see the machine as well, because Fizzy Bombs will help a lot in controlling areas. I- Hope I'd be interested to see if we see something like a blob or an arrow MG because those can control. <laughs> really, anything with curling bomb rush, though, I don't think it's likely. Because curling bomb time rush we is so good on this map. Every time we see skipper zones, you bring up arrow MG. <laughs> I mean, it is. It's one of the maps that it's a zones map, and it's an arrow spray, and it's a lot of curling bombs that can control, especially the upper area. It makes it so hard to get back in if you have zone and forces an enemy team out of zone if you're trying to recap so that if you did do an arrow mg it'd be good strategy. but i think we'll see fairly similar problems from both sides i, I mean, wouldn't yeah. expect many changes except for maybe changing the octo rush since i don't think they'll really need beacons on this map 
Yeah, I mean, if you pull out an arrow MG, that this is the map to pull it out on. So you can still hold out hope for, yeah, as as unlikely as it is. Uh, there is the Explosher coming back, and we see ooh a Hero Slosher. So that one's got uh, suction bomb and missiles, I believe. Bit of an interesting pick, not one I'd quite expect, but hey, perhaps it plays out in their favor here. Yes, we've got the fire fin and the octo brush. The Kent's Octorush coming out to the side of Funky Finches as well. That hammer is going to help with a lot, especially with Carrot Armor. Again, of how narrow the zone, the zone is, the hammer is going to help a lot. But though, the Funky Finches immediately go two down. With the CDS going down on the side of Krusty Krabs as well, the specials are coming out. Funky Finches, and they do manage to get a brief cap, and they're only to 98, putting it a slight penalty on Krusty Krabs. But this is where the Explosher gets the shine. Um, zones, though the hammer is coming out for the side of Funky Finches and forces the Krusty Krabs to jump out or die. And it does look like that Funky Finches will be able to get the lead back here, especially with this slosher hiding on Yeah, Finch is recovering nicely from that good opening push out of the Krusty Krabs here, but now it is Krusty Krabs' turn to break out. They have, they, the, the Capo did get that pick, they have that Booyah coming out now, and so they are going to take Zone back in their favor, quickly working through that small penalty and going to just be taking down. But you see the Slosher on the top side of that zone using the slopes to their advantage, unfortunately does get taken out. The Charger is was also down there too, so that's a two down situation, that was a two down situation. Um, for the Funky Finches, and they're really just getting taken out by this K-Pro and their teammates sitting in the zone. Out comes the Hammer, but just gets cancelled by the K-Pro, as all the way down to 49 for the Krusty Krabs right now. Yes, it's still ticking down, the Bomb Rush is coming out. It does look like that's going to be enough to cap, though the fire from the top of the Bomb Rush is going to go down, and Rain's going to come out. Look, Rain isn't going to come out, I can't see. And the Brush is going to try to get zoned, but they can't do anything, they're basically on their own. So they're going to try to panic pop Hammer, or Hammer, they're just going to have to bounce around until they can find a safe place. So they aren't going to get that safe place. They do get the Hammer out and get one pick on the Junior, but they were two, it was a 2v1, they couldn't win. That was three down on the side of Krusty Krabs, and the K-Pro surviving that despite their Booyah breaking, and, and well, now they go down. And Funky Finches has recapped the zone, so they've got a fair amount of push, but they do have specials with the armor and the missiles near that line, they can definitely get lead here. Yeah, and that's exactly what they're going to try to do, but they need to get those picks. As we saw previously when Funky Finchers was in this position, unfortunately, they, they, they were in good position, but they just got taken out. And again, we see the Slosher just getting taken out with an, un an unfortunate combination of missiles and Explosher. They do take the lead by a few points, and that timer is going to keep on going down. So it is now Krusty Krabs that needs to get back in and needs to stop this zone from taking down, that's exactly what they're gonna do here with the, the combined, the, the paint of the CDS and their teammates. They do not get the cap though, they actually go two down, I spoke too soon! And, and, uh, Funky Finches is just back in control with the bomb rush coming out of the fire fin now. They're at ten and counting, and if, uh, Krusty Krabs cannot do anything, that's going to be a KO for them. And it looks like, oh, the x claw with the pay coming in to neutralize the zone, trying to clutch it up with their team, trying to buy as much time as they possibly can, and it's, it, it pays off! The Charger gets taken out, Krusty Krabs gets the cap two points, and that is a penalty of, what, 61 or something? Um, applied to Funky Finches as they go three down, so there is still one last chance for Krusty Krabs here. Unfortunately, one getting taken out by a suction bomb, and the brush is also almost to that hammer, so we could very well see the push just get shut down. Yeah, it looks like in the previous push where Funky Finches got down to two, that Krusty Krabs, oh, the brush getting a nice triple, but Krusty Krabs played a little too fast and got picked off before they could really do anything. It looks like they're giving this a one more option, and somehow that Zap survives that Booyah Bomb, going just shy of falling into the water. Now the penalty's ticking down, there's only 30 some, 30 ticks left, and or 20 ticks left, and then it's just two oh, points, and then the CDS no. gets a nice double, and they've got them. It's a v wait, that's a VDS. I, I did not. Oh. That's yeah, a I just noticed that as well. And they're oh, popping VDS. the missiles, they're gonna get the recap, but they've only got 35 seconds, and they're, they've got a significant penalty, they've got a member going down, they've got CDS going down. They do have the Explosher still alive, but the, explosion, the Junior goes down, the Explosher is the only one left, and even though they have so much paint, they're not going to be able to hold off the entire Funky Finches team. Slosher doing what Slosher does best in these last 
uh, 20 or so seconds of the match here, using all of those slopes to their advantages, all of this fall off. I mean, just look at them. They, they may have gotten taken out, but they got so many nice picks. You see the Booyah Bomb coming out in this last seven seconds, trying to neutralize the zone and give their team a chance to force overtime. That's exactly what they're going to do. We're going to be seeing an overtime here as Krusty Krabs gets one last chance to force this. Their penalty is at 10 and counting. And so if Krusty Krabs does not, Krusty Krabs, if Funky Finches does not get into the zone, this could spell the end for them. Penalty is gone. The timer is ticking 26 all the way, getting closer to that two every time. But we see the bomb rush coming out. We see the missiles coming out. And the zone but is they neutralized. Survive. <laughs> they survived! And the they zone three, is not and the, three down briefly, the brush jumps in, brushes camp. Oh Zap's the goodness. only one left, and they're not going to make it, and it looks like they've moved a little too fast. A double uh, on the side of the brushes, and somehow the paint with the exposure gets it. And uh, they're going to get the. They're going to clutch it at the end, getting just enough paint to surround oh. the missiles and the bomb rush. That, I mean, that triple. The, the VD is going to triple at the end, and pretty much just save the game for their team there's such a good win for the crusty crabs right there and if i'm not and, and look at that ka i believe that's 19 out of the junior there if i'm not mistaken that's an 11 out of is the... that an 11 i can't read i'm oh, that's sorry 17 yeah they look similar 17 19 boy. 11 same numbers um the the, the, the quality is really crunchy on my end i'm so sorry if i misread any numbers um I, i'm really trying my best but if is does that put our, our set at 1 1 i can't remember yes that is a 1 1 and we're going to be taking a decisive game three. Uh, Rainmaker on Sturgeon Shipyard. Oh boy. We're, let's see how much Toxic Mist we see it come this time. <laughs> that's going to be really helpful. And while the highest scoring routes involve making a lot of jumps, which Toxic Mist easily restricts. So we could see that coming out. And we could see a sea jet like you've said earlier about monta because this is another very nice map for sea jets and stingrays but i don't think we'll see much change or anything the comps will probably they probably don't have any reason to change given how well both of those comps worked last time oh definitely i mean Contrary to Wahoo Rainmaker, which is what we saw last time, there's so many ways to push on Sturgeon Rainmaker. You know, like you said, a lot of them involve different jumps. So you can you can go jump jump onto the box and go up top left. You can go straight down the middle and use the sponge. You can go straight down the middle and go up the ramp and go the long way. You can you can use the the wall on the right and go up. So there's because of the way the pedestal is located in the map is shaped, there's a lot of different ways that you can choose to, to go about making your push. Yes, and looks like we're waiting for one more player to ready up. I am not expecting much of a change in either comp, but Yeah, neither am I. Like I said, I, I said that, but um The only thing I could see is they might go back to the Octobrush duo if they want a longer support weapon for missiles and we might see the roller again as well it's a very good map very cramped map which will help the roller a lot and curling bombs help a lot if you're trying to push in rainmaker definitely curling bomb provides great movement and path making so i would definitely not be surprised to see the view roller coming back out there's the explosher again explosher and rainmaker uh we do not see the roller we see the splosher coming out though as well as that uh kenza octo brush so hammer can make a path if the hammer does not get taken out and that's also the vds coming back so so nice picks but like we said not much of a change here it looks like both teams have found what they're comfortable with yeah do we just see a change to a kenza gal on the side of funky yeah uh of crusty um, crabs yes. and the last of the wall is gonna help a lot because like the pop smith, it's going to be very useful in denying a rank maker place because you can't go, you can't just stuff um, go through a wall. If anything, you could die off the wall. It's pretty embarrassing if that does happen to these teams. And we do see Krusty Krabs taking an early pick. They get a few points, but they're not able to push much further. They don't really have any specials. They're going to keep trying to go, but they're going to get forced back by that Slosher. That Slosher is in trouble now. They're getting three on them, and it's going to be difficult for them alone to be able to shut down the rain maker. Time to take box jump. And the Rainmaker's Every... firing away. That's two down on the side of Funky Finches with Washer's pushback. If they can clear this area, the Rainmaker can score quite a bit. So that's proving difficult. Slosher doing a really good job of taking one. Everybody's got it in for the Slosher, but the Rainmaker does make that jump. Unfortunately, gets taken out shortly after. So the push does not go as far as uh, the. 
trying to remember team names, as uh, Krusty Krabs would have liked, probably, with the Explo having to jump out not being in a great situation. But they do keep their baller, and they are now able to regroup with their teammates as Funky Finches picks up the Rainmaker, and looks like they're going for the same route. But you see, that box is getting fired down on, and so they are not able to safely make the jump just yet. However, um, actually, yeah, they, they, they did go two down, um, as well, and they are currently two down, so the Rainmaker really just kind of has to play it safe. Unfortunately, does get taken out by a cheeky shot from that Explo. Really, really, really nice shot. Yeah, like, they're they really using blind. Their, that was great. They're really using their fall off nicely here, and you know they've got that baller on line for a path to make, or if they just simply need to stay alive right now, and they're really just blocking their teammates. Look at how closely they're all clustered together. A well placed bomb could take out three of them. But out comes that baller just to hopefully provide a distraction. Unfortunately, Rainmaker does get taken out and so they are going to be the last alive and forced to retreat and jump out here. Yeah, so this is a good situation for the side of Funky Finches. They've got a push space. They've got the Ray coming out. They just need to get to their Explosure, here, but they're denied immediately. With the Rainmaker carrying down, with the Ray picks the Explosure. here. The Funky Finches does have another chance to down if they can get a couple more picks, but they need to get those picks. It doesn't look like they're going to get them. With uh, the Flocker jumping in but losing the 1v1, the bomb coming out, though the Rainmaker switches back in blue and pops for the side of Funky Finches. They, they get a few mm. more points, but it's not quite enough. And the Funky Finches go to, and that's going to be another push with the missiles coming out, unless they can somehow get through, and that's not going to happen. The, the, CD, the VDS getting a nice pick and keep keeping the slosher from trying to get anything more, and it was a bit of a rush move on the slosher's part there. Trying to grab the Rainmaker and hero play it, but really they just threw their life away. And more teammates followed the slosher's pass, with the Funky Finches going three down and giving Krusty Krabs yet another opportunity to extend their lead, and I wish just to see if they try to take the same pass or if they're just trying. Yeah, a lead of three points is not safe in Rainmaker, and so Krusty Krebs wants to extend their lead, but no! A nice pick out of the Charger there just denies it on that same block that they've been trying to traverse this entire time. However, the push isn't over yet, you know, we saw the Booyah come out, we saw the Missiles come out, and if they can get rid of that Slosher, which they do, the Ray is out now, but the VDS is just using their range so nicely, getting such good picks, and they make it, they are able to extend their lead, and that's and, and, and just even further right now, Rainmaker does get taken out at 46, but 46 is a much safer lead right now, especially this late into the game when there's only one minute left. Ooh. Yes, and they did a really good job dealing with that Ray, because they, they waited just long enough that they could keep the Rainmaker from resetting to mid, but the Ray was also about to time out, so it couldn't actually get a pick. The Rainmaker does reset, and Funky Finches are going to need to push soon, but Krusty Krabs already has mid. And it's already starting to push up as well. The hammer's coming out, but it's not going to get anyone. It's just going to go down. The Charger's trying to get a pick, but they can't. They don't really have an angle on any of the players on the side of Krusty Krabs. And they're getting constantly pressured by bombs. One set member of the Krusty Krabs does go down, which might give the Funky Finches the opportunity they need, but they've only got less than 20 seconds. And Can I just say, look at this junior go, look at, like, they're using their bombs and their movement so well, helping their team right now, just painting up, doing exactly what they need to, they pushed the Rainmaker all the way to 25 in the last 15 seconds of this game, which really, that just seals the fate for the Funky Finches, unfortunately, here, they have one shot, they have one shot at this, they picked up the Rainmaker as the members of the Krusty Krabs go down, uh, unless I'm putting teammates wrong, hopefully I'm not. Um, and they have this one last chance. Bombs getting thrown at the Raymaker left and right. People shooting up at them. They're just stuck here, and their teammates need to get picks, but they're not getting them, so the Raymaker's forced to take a little bit of an alternative route. But look at all of those bombs just being thrown at them everywhere they go. One member does go down. You see the Charger coming down, trying to, trying to body block their teammate, trying to help them keep them alive, but they do go down. You see just the members getting closer and closer, closer to the Raymaker and does take them out. So that is going to be a convincing and decisive game. Uh, tries to remember what number of game three. we're on. Game three. Yes, yes thank you. I... For the Krusty Krabs. Wow. We've been seeing such tense matches out of here, but that was a very nice win for them. Which is um, off the dials, Matt, team making system doing its job. Uh, yes. Shout yes. out to everyone working behind the scenes to run this. Oh, definitely. I mean,. These are, remember, these are all individual signups, and all of these teams were balanced pretty much by hand by the staff. So, great, like, huge shout outs to the team that, that made all of this possible. I mean, 
like you said, they've do they've been doing their job very well. And with that, we are going to go into a quick break before our round three of pools, so stick around and we will be back in a couple of minutes.
Hello everybody and welcome back to It's Dangerous to Go Alone 23. We are currently in our pools round three. And if you are just joining us, I am Cater and I am joined here today by Quark. Yes, and we are going to be seeing the incredible ice of Hobbs with Hectic ha Hackers on Clan Blitz on Inkblot Art Academy. What are your thoughts on this one? Blitz on Inkblot. It, it's a really area-focused map mode, honestly, and you can you can say that about pretty much everything in Splatoon, but Inkblot clamps especially so because, you know, you need to have pretty much all of that plat area locked down in order to get a good extended push going. If you just kind of try and, and sneak a clam in, you might get it, but then you'll get forced out immediately and you won't be able to follow up on it. So you need to have turf control, you need to have that locked down as during or before you start your push. Yes, it's going to be a very difficult map to push for each side without like a wiper mulch field down or special such as booyah or bubbles to clear out the area. Because other, or even a bomb rush isn't going to do much because your opponent just keeps shooting through it. But it's going to be very hard because the only chance, the only ways to get up are a steps you have to jump up, but you can ink it, or you have to walk across an uninkable and then go around to the basket. So unless someone gets a cheeky flank behind the basket, it's going to be very difficult. Though we could see that, and that tactic off devastating. If someone does get behind the basket because the defending team is arrayed to protect a push going up flat, and there's someone behind them, and it's really hard to get back behind and cover them. Oh, definitely. But yeah, the way that plat is structured, there's that whole overlook that stretches behind it that the defending team can be on, but also the op the um the opposing team has access to that area so if they get it if they take control of that that's just the defending team getting pushed back even farther so it'll be really interesting to see how area control plays i mean you said bomb rush bomb rush is actually i find it to be a really useful specialist um here because you know it is such an area denier especially a bomb rush like suction bomb rush which you see on a couple of commonly used weapons like neo splash and fire fin that it just prevents people from being there for like a good five seconds just because you know you don't want to be caught in a field of suction bombs waiting to explode yes and we're reloading again and that's Ooh, hydra, custom hydra. Nice. and a like forge and as well as I believe, that's the... No, that's not it. Double bubble com com coming out, actually, which is going to help them. The other side, we've got a, a vanilla jet squatcher, which is going to help a lot in dying any quad pushes be missed. And then an interesting pick of our... See if the ink jet's really going to help them clearing up, along with the bomb run. Oh, definitely. Um, an early two down on the side of, I believe, that is the Hectic Hackers? Um, yes. Yes, okay, I'm, I'm trying to make sure I got the team names right early on so I don't mess up later. But yes, the an early two down enabling um, the incredible isopods to uh, gather a little bit of clams early, but unfortunately does go down. So it's just going to be this, this constant struggle back and forth between mid that we've been seeing, you know, at, at the beginning of most of these matches here, because these teams are so evenly matched, Really, we, they need to wait for a big op, for a big push such as three down and a nice inkjet cancel out of that Hydra right there as we're seeing picks go back and forth on both sides, but really nothing huge happening because both teams don't have that opening that they Ooh, need to. Ooh, and the Zap doing a nice job getting a pick of Hydra and going down. Oh, they there's a three down. up for the uh, incredible Ooh. isopods, though a bomb picks them up before they can try to do anything. The Zap's movement was lovely getting, goofing out the Hydra. So now both teams are forced to back up and reassess plans. Start to move for mid but they don't really have much to get with it, and that's two down on the side of Hectic Hackers. And the Hydra is gonna fall. Oh wait, no, I got some factor. Yes. And not the Hydra, but the Jet Squatcher is going to fall. Hectic Hackers to back up a little further. And the Splash is gonna start pushing up. They're gonna push, push once they get these specials. Those both teams one down, but neither team has any cleanse. So it's gonna be hard. The splash going for a pick on the Hydra, I'm not quite gonna get it. They do get it, barely. With them. They got the bomber. Popping the bomber for a bit early. Just to try to get mid back. They still have no cleanse, so despite the fact they're throwing all these specials out and getting these picks, they can't push. Yeah, they have 21 cleanse, now they finally make a power. Armor coming out, um, and you see this is, they have two powers actually, so they're really trying to get a push, but they do not have control of Plat, and so those bubbles coming out popped to deny that push, does pick off the zap there, and really just very, very nice defense out of, I, I, uh, I forgot, I've already forgotten the teams. Okay, uh, I can't, okay, yeah, the, the, yeah, I, okay, yes, thank you. 
really nice defense out of the hack that's preventing that push from happening and so the isopods all really they are two down now and so they're forced to back up all the way to their basket the squiffer just keeping the clam alive trying not to get rushed down here and still no push has happened we are now in the latter half of our match two minutes 13 seconds left and counting both teams are just trying to find an opportunity hydra going down to an unfortunately placed bomb right there but because neither team has been able to make a huge breakout push yet there's just been been nothing although we do see the hackers uh going to down right there and another bomb rush coming out of this neo splash right now unfortunately does get taken down a little bit early and the power clam gets taken down as well by the hydra so just really not able to do anything as the zap being the last one uh, alive is forced to go back all the way to their basket and really although both teams have been putting out good push opportunities the opposing team has just shut them down and neither team has found the resources to get something going yet yeah i think it's been if anything a bit of a problem reporting special both teams have had pretty strong but neither is their specials has just been a bit too scared like you're seeing the coming out random we have the armor the push off they attempted to push off the armor a minute or so ago, but they didn't uh, push finally, yet. No, that was the final. The bubbles are coming out, getting them enough to feel the double bubble comp really showing how strong it can be in allowing a push the rain coming out and just as I'm saying they weren't coordinating their specials, they do manage to coordinate all their specials. Which is gonna force the uh, incredible isopods to back up and the hacking hackers hack heckling hackers are going to get down to uh, or hectic hackers are gonna get down to thirty six and they can probably run off this push if they just turtle up and play defense. It's going to be I mean, a lot of questions. I mean, yeah, that that is to get to win. that is exactly the breakout push that they needed. They finally were able to coordinate both clans and specials, but here we have the uh, isopods coming back with a push of their own all the way down to 50 unfortunately to go two down with the, uh, the the splash just respawning being the last one alive and unfortunately it was a very very good push on their end but it's just not going to stand up they also lost their pity clam doing that so right now they have 16 seconds to build a power clam they have nine across their teammates 11 now but really they, they just they need one power and they don't have that yet, and if they don't have that power, they cannot force overtime, and being three down, it looks like that is just going to be the game and right there, and it is. Yeah, and at the end, I don't know if you saw it there, but one of the players from the hackers was uh, sneaking around back, so in yep. case they you did see the get green a climb, they would have had a nice, uh, it wouldn't have, they wouldn't have the other push, because someone would have been jumped there about to make and dunked it. Yeah. And wow, the Hydra there with such a high KA. An amazing job out of them. You know, Hydra's got, with its range and power and killing power, it's just got such good area control. You know, you look, you see the Hydra, you don't really want to, to, to go into the Hydra's line of fire because then you're dead. You look at the Hydra, you look at the Hydra, oh wait, you're dead now. Yep, and I next, mean, pretty we're much. We're going on to. Tower control on Starfish main stage. This should be a fun one. It's a fairly balanced map and a pretty common oh, yeah. one. Living. Spaces open for flanks, but also spaces for a bunch of longer range weapons, as I was saying. I definitely think we'll see the Hydra again because of how long range control it can bring, though we may see something if it's a splatling main like a remix or a V heavy for the special like we are stingray that can stop a push which we didn't really see much of on either team last time <laughs> oh yeah i mean splatlings on starfish main stage are so much fun uh being a splatling main myself and like you said the stage is very well rounded you know you have that big open area in mid but also the grates around both sides of mid as well as the attics really leave room for other weapons to go around and get flanks so if you're not keeping your wits about you even early on in the game just a flank can pop out kill two of your teammates and i you know just keeping your guard up is something you really have to do on this stage just because of how many ways there are to get to places you can pretty much go anywhere from everywhere loading in pretty soon i don't What's really going to be key is getting through the checkpoints on this map, especially the second one, because the first isn't terrible if you get onto the uh, opponent's snipe, but the second one, it can get surrounded from every single direction. Your opponents have a great shot from their upper platforms onto this hour. And the second checkpoint really got, is really what's going to make or break this match, because if you get through there, it's still hard, but you've gotten through that checkpoint, but if you can't get through that checkpoint, that's what's going to make it allow your make it very hard for you to keep pushing and we do see hydra Lots coming out we've got a crapid coming out as well as a 
Is that a 52 or a 96? I can't tell. Uh, I believe that is a 52. Looks like a vanilla 52, if I'm not mistaken. A little bit of a, an unorthodox pick there, but it's always nice to see uncommon weapons. And we're also seeing a remix come out, um, like you mentioned. So now Splatling's on both sides. Um, I believe this is going to be hackers, uh, question mark? No, this is It's the, not? Uh, okay. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong. Is... I can't even... Okay, we're having issues. Okay. Yeah, okay. unfortunately. So, anyway, the green team is going to be pushing up. They're going to go to the lead. <laughs> Popping a bo uh, suction bomb rush from the side of Slasher. Booyah coming out as well. And yes, that is the hackers. Um, so the gal getting a nice pick, going for another pick on the on the remix. Not quite yet. Oh, they, they don't. Yeah, they do manage to somehow get that. And dodge the Slasher as well. Getting nearly a triple if they can get the Slasher as well. The Slasher doesn't, isn't taken down, but the gal does a really nice job cleaning that, cleaning that up and stopping really the hacker's entire push and is now going for a flank. And, they're playing incredibly aggressively, I'm interested to see if it's going to pay off. Yeah, they get tagged, unfortunately, forced to back off there now that they've been spotted. But still, really, really good pressure, and it looks like they're actually going to go for the same flank because they saw the Splatling up here now that they aren't tagged. Unfortunately, it looks like the Splatling was a little bit wiser to that. And so now they're just going to sit up here and wait for their next victim. Um, meanwhile, their team, uh, unfortunately, do get taken out, and with that, their team goes three down and their push gets stopped at an unfortunate 80. Uh, we're seeing pretty much the same thing last game, you know, small pushes from both teams, but without huge openings, both teams are really just putting up the defense on each other and not letting each other get through. As I like to note that the incredible isopods are actually pulling out a double baller comp, which I think is very interesting. As well as nearly a double backline comp as well, depending on how you view bamboo, because the <laughs> hydra is definitely a backline. And I am... Kind of seems like a questionable choice to run double baller on power because of how much the power itself messes up baller because it, keep, it yeah. provides a shield and it's pretty easy to get shot off. So also, I feel like it would yeah. They only have defensive specials really other than. The other than the missile. I can't tell which. Yeah. It's an MK1. Yes. Uh, so it's going to be difficult for them to push without the aggressive specials like Booyah and Bomb Rush that the hackers have. So, and they don't have. Any lethal bombs either. They've got mines, torpedo, sprinkler, curling. and curling bomb. And curling bomb is useful as a weapon in most cases, though I've died to too many. <laughs> I mean, we all have, yeah, but it's not really considered a lethal bomb. They are getting on the tower here. You need to see the crap. It has that baller at the ready in order, and then they're going to pop it to have that second life as they go through pit with the, the hackers, I believe, now two down. <laughs> but the Booyah coming out right on tower showing the strength of the Booyah, stalling out that push a little bit, although the Krabby just gets right back on tower. They are now past that first checkpoint and, and clo getting closer to that second uh, tick after tick on the timer. You see, you know, people dropping onto the tower, and this is exactly what you were talking about earlier. People on the defending team can drop from those top overlooks onto the tower and get very, very nice shots onto it, and that's exactly what happened right there. Yes, and like we saw that since hack, uh, hack, Hectic Hackers has bombs, they can get in a lot more easily than the uh, Incredible Isopods. You guys have to rely only on their main weapons really to push back in in most cases, instead of having sub-weapons they can use the pressure at range. And they are totally pushed again, the baller is shot off power, and the heavy's in a really nice spot. Stop the tick and lots of blaster and tries to pick them out or something. Yeah, the thing about Baller is that the tower has grates around it, and Baller can't go through grates. So if you're Baller on the tower and then you're just shot off, you have to find a, you have to like get onto another ledge and then jump from that ledge onto the tower. And by the time you've done that, your Baller pretty much has run out because Baller can't go through those grates. It can't get back up onto tower after it's been knocked off. So that's just another downside of Baller on on tower control. You know, you see. Uh, the remix on snipe right here. They have that booyah, that GG booyah at the ready, and they're just using that range to put so much pressure on the tower. Look at how much reach they can get pretty much halfway into mid just from standing on the snipe. That's the beauty of Splatlings on Starfish main stage. They're sitting up on snipe, they're far back from the rest of the action, but they can still have a huge part in the rest of it. You see a baller coming out on the side of the isopods, but it's just pushed back by a bomb coming out of the K-Pro, and although they are trying to get a push in this last 10 seconds of the game, being down by, I believe that it's just one point here, if the, if I'm not mistaken. Unfortunately, they go two down with one, three down with one dying. But they have a chance uh, now. Not them. The, Sorry, the wrong team. Go down. 
and they didn't manage to hold the Booyahs long enough to just get a GG Booyah out of quick cap. There's only one point between both teams. They've got the ball already on tower, so... They are so close. If the... If the Kegel... The Kegel wasn't in position, they weren't at all. That's the oh, Hydra there. So I, they couldn't use the baller as a cheat way to... It ends. They oh. try to pop their baller, but they don't manage to grab on, and that's the end. Lo wow. With the incredible ice pods losing by one point. They got so close at the end right there. You know, they were they were right on the lead, but unfortunately just were they were not able to hold the tower for long enough and we are seeing such tense games here. Yes, and now we're going to move on to the spot zones on the reef, which is another fun map. I wonder if we'll see the double baller and double bubble comps come out again. This is a nice map, or we could see double splashdown because of how nice it is to jump down on zones from bridge to the splashdown. Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, jumping down from an elevated area gives you both a bigger splash on radius, and also you go up higher in the air, so it's a lot harder to cancel it. Especially for shorter ranged weapons that already struggle with canceling splash down. So, I mean, hey, splash down on this map, not necessarily uh, too terrible of an idea. Um, the double baller could also be viable here, maybe, as be as Reef is a double zone map, so one of those zones can be neutralized uh, or capped just by ballering into it and exploding. Reef uh, in itself. Take a brief Actually, no. Oh, yeah. Reef in oh. itself is a very well balanced map. To be completely honest, like, you know, you have that bridge where anchors can set up, or where or where people can just sit up there and fire down on. You have, you know, you have little alleys. You have open areas by tree. You have mix of like kind of open areas but not quite you have boxes you have trees you have cars you have pretty much everything you know there's a reason that the reef is the promotional front for splatoon 2 and that is because it is such a good stage i'm sure someone's watching this stream right now and be like stop saying nice things about the reef <laughs> oh uh everybody has different opinions but honestly i personally think that you know maybe it's not my favorite map but reef is a very well-rounded map and i appreciate it for that <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be well, you know, one more player already up. And I wouldn't be surprised to see the gal coming out again because so much pain. I don't think we'll see a huge pain because most of the weapons that were played can be good, but I hope that uh, incredible isopods will bring out some bombs because they'll probably oh, want yeah. them for zone. Oh yes, definitely. Having having lethal subs is is very very nice on splatzons, especially because it is such an area control. I mean the ground itself but also you know just controlling the areas around the zones preventing the other teams and yes we do see more uh, lethal bombs coming out of suction bombs uh, as well as the neo splash with the burst bomb there staying on the remix though um so that's still a nice pick with the booyah bombs coming out but they do have a, a nice mix of specials now with the inkjet the armor and the bomb rush so one down already on the side of Incredible isopods. The Scuffers trying to get something. They're pinching for ancient. They've got their ancient, but they can't do much. And it looks like they're gonna try to go on specials, but they go one down. Uh, but two down on the side of Hectic Hackers, and it's very. It looks like Incredible isopods could have an opening, but they're just. They don't quite have it, and they. Okay, they do get the cap. They've got an ancient ready as well if they want to try to put. Got the arm. They probably. They do pop the ancient. That's two more going down. On the side of incredible, on the side of tactic hackers, with incredible Ooh. taking the lead, that jumps at getting the midair right before they jump up. Yeah, midair super jump kills are honestly sometimes so disappointing, like for the jumper because you know it's like oh I got out and then you just die midair. But that was a very very nice kill out of the zap here. She's sharking now, kind of almost distracting attention, pulling attention towards them. Does get taken out, but not before their team gets to 53 and counting because the zones have not been capped by hectic hackers yet. So the isopods could keep this push alive if they just keep the zones in their favor. You see the, you know, the K-Pro here coming out, trying to get something done. They, they're not even close to their Booyah just because K-Pro's Booyah cost is so high. But uh, zones just go back right in favor of the isopods as they're now past 50 to 43 and counting. Yes, and the Hydra getting a nice pick on the side of the hackers and they dodge, popping them up. They're gonna be able to push in right now because they've got the person who... They're getting pushed back by the sniper and they can't really cap because there's so much pressure coming up from the other side and all the bombs. So the bomb rush does come out. That's gonna be enough to cap, but the booyah is immediately. And it 
they don't incredible life but doesn't quite get the cap but Tyson Crackers only hanging on barely and the cap is gone. The Hydra's doing a really good job fighting close range, taking one person down and still not dying. Take go get another pick, the Hydra's popping off right now. Getting a Freeze. triple actually it's blade triple, yeah. Yeah, Hydra but still really no using cap their off range. Of all that work. Yeah, Hydra really using their range to the advantages and finally getting the cap and being able to take down that penalty a little bit. You now you see them putting mines around the zones so that if any ink goes down to the zones, they get a little bit more. But here come the isopods back out in full force. They have a booyah underneath them as well to back them up and already getting into the zone. I mean, you see with the combination of the splash and the zap, that's just so much paint going out on their side. They've already gotten the cap of the zone back. The zone's really going back and forth right now, but it is the isopods who are just winning these fights right now zap getting a such a nice double can they get it to they don't quite get the triple but it was still really really nice aggression installing forcing the capro to back up capro does have their booyah now but unfortunately gonna get canceled before they get that off canceled by um just an unfortunately placed bomb for them as that timer is pretty much run out for the isopods right now and so they can just sit pretty and continue their 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 slow inevitable march towards a ko yes and Hectic Cackers are forced through the back. They do manage to get one zone, but in a pick somehow, it looks like they got a flank on the right. We didn't have the camera. And they push all the way through the zone, getting the zone before. Mm. Well, incredible inklings just push the base. So the Splash gets a double. It's going for that kit, so they get that as well. They get The Splash gets a delayed triple, but the Hydra's there. The jumps are coming in. It does look like Hectic Hackers are gonna hold on to the zone, but it's not clear how long, because they're still kind of forced back. They're getting. Kept off the bridge by the squi the squiffer, and they Ooh. it just coming out, and that's gonna be one down the side of Hexy Haggers. Two down, nice shot for the Uchen, though it is a trade. But that's, that's and three then the Hydra goes down, and it looks like the incredible isopods are gonna get a cap. They're gonna be forced to jump. So the Hexy Haggers are gonna jump, and it's not looking good for the Hexy Haggers. Yeah. Yep, like you said. Just over 30 seconds left in this match. Seven, we're sitting 70 to 20 right now as the hackers are just trying to get into that zone, but so just so much raw paint coming out of the isopods right now. They do have, hackers do have control of the zone. They have control of areas around the zone. They just need to keep it up. They need to win their fights and they just need to not die. That's exactly what the CDS here is doing right now. Two down on the side of the isopods. CDS trying to get another pick out of the heavies. Booyah right now, just really around them, not letting them relax as the CDS goes back to guard zone. The um, the isopods need to have control of both zones to force overtime, and so that's what they're going to try to do. They, they do get overtime, but unfortunately the isopods are able to just jump uh, right back directly into the zones, take them both, and not even give hackers a chance at winning the game. Yes, though I do believe hackers still won the set, but that third game, they almost had that and got a They could have got the, that last second booyah, forced them to scatter and cap the zone. Which is this, which spelled their doom, and then they, they like, they were scattered, they were pushed back, they couldn't get back in. But yeah, overall though, just a really good set, and honestly, all of these sets have been so so good. We've been seeing amazing matches and really clutch overtime wins and caps out of all of these teams. So, I mean, although one must emerge victorious, shout outs to all of these players that are that are playing in this tournament right now. Yes, we'll be right back. Round four.
Hello everyone and welcome back to It's Dangerous to Go Alone 23. We right now are in our final round, round four of the pools stage. If you are just joining us, I am Cater and today I am joined here by Quark. Yes, and we're going to be the, seeing the jamming jellies first. The precarious pretenders, Rainmaker Skipper villains. Definitely a weird Oh yeah, Rainmaker Skipper. Honestly, um, you know, a couple of different ways to get to the pedestal, and then, you know, if you go up the regular route, you you have a little bit of a branch. You can go the the very risky short way up right to the pedestal, or you can go the little bit longer way. But either way is actually pretty risky because the path on the longer route around is small, so you can very easily fall off if you're not careful. Or just get shot trying to get across. I mean, yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, it's definitely a map that. It's impossible to push on, you get one wipe, and suddenly you're at, like, 20. Though getting yeah. past, like, 35-ish is quite difficult, because either you have to go the way around or the hardest way if you're not scoring any points, because you say the same as the Rainmaker pedestal, or you have to swim with a wall that's incredibly bright in view of the entire enemy team. And yeah, if you don't get to the top of the wall, the Rainmaker resets to the bottom and you don't get any points, so... Yeah, it's it's, it's pretty unforgiving. You also have the um, quote-unquote Rainmaker free zone in mid, but you can still take the Rainmaker into that zone. It will just make the timer tick down way faster. And if you go back there, you can jump onto, I believe, you know, the slick uninkable ramp that is commonly used for flanks. And if you, you, you walk down there and you get like 20 points just walking down a small stretch of uninkable. Um, so that's, that's also a, a possible pushing route that teams can take if they so desire. Yes, and we should... I'm not really sure what to expect from comps, because I don't know much for what they play at all. I do know Smith plays right about... Prapid, but not in, in Rainmaker. <laughs> they, uh, I've heard yeah. that from them, so... Could see, could be seeing, yeah, just a mix of weapons out. No, I'm not really sure what to expect either, but it should be good. <laughs> see, knowing the, the sets that we've been seeing previously on stream, I expect nothing less. You've got... Sweet. Oh, Ooh. hey, Emperors, you don't see those much. It's yeah, back some to 2017, I guess. Some interesting picks here. Um, you know, we've, we we get the, the 96, we have a V Heavy for Stingray, which is a pretty cool uh, pick. Already one of the, the, the shot on Pretenders going down, unfortunately. And that's three down for them very quickly, with the Zap here being the last one alive, forced to already back off. Um, and so that's going to be. Uh, I'm, I cannot remember the team names right now. <laughs> the precarious players are going to be forced onto the defense. They're not quite going to. The Rainmaker on the side of the Jeremy Jealous isn't going to get fucked. But they are going to make it. I'd like to note that Precarious Defenders is running an all front line against a double back line. And it doesn't look like it's working out too well because they can't reach the Bamboo Hydra. Not the Hydra, the uh, Heavy. And it's going to make. And it's going to let those weapons just pick them off from a distance really easy as so they can get a rush. Not like this is going to be easy for those weapons to just back up and avoid getting rushed. So oh yeah, how comes the, the Rainmaker does a great job dodging the for quite some time, but the heavies hanging up. They've been still trying to paint up, but the Paris Pretenders do look like they're going to try to make foot they be way too fast. And the Heavy gets an easy pick. Yeah. So the Heavy is taking that as well, but also being really aggressive and it just for Oh, I'll move this yeah, both both teams trying to play really, really quickly here, getting taken out left and right. It is the Jelly's turn to pick up the Rainmaker as well, pushing it. <laughs> uh, is it? Yeah, I'm, I'm not getting yeah, confused wrong, am I? And they do get it. They, they get the lead all the way down, just going up, trying to get past that heavy. And so they get it all the way to 32, I believe. My stream is crunching again. I can't quite read the numbers. But, yes, that's um, 32. Yeah, so the Heavy, again, getting another pick, uh, preventing more damage from being done. 32, though, is uh, a pretty high number. As you saw, the Rainmaker had to travel quite a distance up to the top of that ramp just to get it. So it's going... So, so um, Precarious Pretenders really has their work cut out for them in the next... Um, I use three minutes of this match already. Uh, both the Jellies that have the... That are the deficit cut on. Ah, my... my bad. Yes. But, yes. And they are two down. The Rainmaker is hanging really far back. Missiles are coming out. k is like... going for a crazy flank and they might just get it. They're going after the Charger instead of the Rainmaker, which I can understand. But the Rainmaker does kill them, so they might have wanted to go with the Rainmaker. And the Rainmaker is stuck back there. They've only got 20 things they want to get a chance to do. 
before they blow up because if they blow up and they're not careful, they could take multiple. Of it doesn't look like they're gonna get much because though I did find the comp of the all frontline cop kind of crushed. Well, at first, let's do the double up. Stay in this, and while the Rainmaker does advance, like they they get killed by missiles right before they run out of time, and Paris defenders have a yeah, look at all of that map control being put out by the pretenders just so, so quickly. You know, they have a lot of paint on their side with their very, you know, short range, high damage, high paint comp. And so being able to do that, being able to just take so much turf in such a short period of time is really, really helping them here. You can see the bomb rush coming out of the Neo Splash does get a pick, getting taken out by the Bamboo. And that actually leaves them three down. So this is an opening right now for the, the, the Jellies to first possibly get something going. Unfortunately, a little bit slow in starting to push. So the Raymaker's just going to immediately go down to a clump of missiles left behind by their teammates. Yes, and it's going to be a 2v3. The side of the Jellies does have nothing. Got a person. Bebu gets not. Another one going down with the trade, but Bebu's gonna get the jump kit of it. Okay, they are gonna get jump caps. Flash does a good job. Not immediately dying, and Paris Pretenders do have an opportunity with the Rainmaker set. Given the. Oh, the Paris Pretenders have now had a chance to regroup and it's going to keep the jamming jellies from immediately being. They're getting dropped off. Quickly. And if they can back up and use their range, they'll get the picks here, but if the, jelly, if the Pretenders are fast enough, the jellies. With the ink that's coming out, the missiles are coming. So the, oh. between the missiles and the tri slosher down because all the chip damage the tribe just mows right through. Yeah, and that's a full wipe on the side of the, the jellies there, I believe. Yes, as the pretender is able to just pick up the Rainmaker, and now that mid is completely green in their favor. We have 20 seconds left in this match, still standing 30, 30s to 60s, and although the Rainmaker does get taken out, they have already pushed it so far up and stalled out the, um, the, ah, the jellies so much. Um, really, they, they might have one last chance if they're able to pop and pick up the Rainmaker, and they do. So we are going to see an overtime, but look at all that control that the Pretenders have. It is going to take a miracle for the Jellies to be able to get all the way to 33 before their Rainmaker turns out. So they do get a pick, and the missiles and the armor carrying about, which is going to at least stall them. And that tries going for them. They, they get the try. They have a chance, if, especially if they take the mid way across the ankle, they could. But they're taking the look for it, and it's going to give the time to organize it. And then two dropping down, Ooh. a trade going out, no. so one teammate <laughs> jumping in for the Rimmer, but eventually a flank finally ends. Yeah, just the, the constant rushing down from the Pretenders, unfortunately the Jellies had to fall eventually to it. Um, the miracle almost happened, they got so many nice picks, but in the end it was just too much for them. And that is a game one going to the Precarious Pretenders there. We have a pop-off from the shot on the side of the Pretenders getting 18. Wow. They did a lot of work for their team, pop a lot of missiles. Now we're going to... Clan Blitz on Piranha Pit. Uh, yeah. This is gonna be a fun one, because it's either incredibly easy to push or extremely hard, depending on whether or not you're rolling the choke points. That oh, yeah, and I, I would not be surprised to see bubble weapons come out, even double bubble comms, just because the way that this map is structured, it is so long that having bubbles just to move in front of you, having that shield to tank damage is really, really helpful. You also have that rail that kind of leads to an area behind basket, so if somebody is able to sneak over there with clams and then possibly land a jump, a teammate jumps to them with other clams, you can get a very sneaky push going that way, but you can also easily be spotted by someone else, so sometimes you just gotta gamble and go for that. And it'll be interesting to see, um, you know, which, which, uh, methods teams choose for pushing. Yeah, and... It's gonna be interesting to see how both teams with drastically the themselves handle it, because the jamming jellies... Honestly, probably need to speed up a little if they can change the faster weapons. Because they, they, especially on a map like Prana Pit, so tight, they're not going to be able to just back up and play passively in long range and get picks off the the aggressive of uh, pretentious pretenders. They're going to have to down drones. They don't have anywhere to go if they're for a bad situation. Though I don't know if they're members. Yeah, definitely. 
Yeah, Pit can really be a lockout map because, you know, once you get control of the area around the clam basket and the area leading up to it, that's basically the only place that the, the teams have to drop there. So, like, like if you, you have the, the way to go out, you know, on top right over all of those boxes where you can drop by conveyors, but that's about it. All the other ways to get out of spawn lead to around the clams basket. So if you're not able to, to, to get down there, you're just kind of, you know, stuck up there firing down trying to get lucky picks and it, it's really difficult. So if a team is able to force a logout, it could make it really, really difficult for the other team to come back. We do see a, like, a, a slightly more aggressive Flames are coming out, which play pretty supportive, but really aggressive. See a switch to Cade's as well, which the baller will help. On the other side, we do see a bit more range with that, uh, 96 scout deco, which is gonna help. Bamboo's already going down. Other than that, it changes, but yeah. Bamboo's already going down. Another one going down. There's a 96, and then Slush, and probably Slush getting a nice pick off. It seems that they've already got a power clean there. They missed the throw, but they're definitely gonna get it. They get the throw, but they fall oh! off the edge. Oh, they've still got an armor, they've got more clans coming in, and I don't know where the full team is. Like, they're yeah, not I... going to the basket. Well, what? <laughs> the camera's not showing us, I don't know where they are. Like, they didn't all get wiped, it's just, they're, they're just... Gone. Not there. Wait, are they in spawn? <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Yeah, they... I don't... Wait, they're, yeah. they're in spawn. They didn't they're... have a DC, did they just, like, give up? I don't know, they just seem to be... Yeah, you I'm not we sure saw, what happens because we saw somebody there walking were no DCs around. On our end. Yeah. Uh, are we gonna have a flashback to Lowing Grand Final? Oh no, <laughs> no, no! We are not doing that again. But yeah, I, I saw a team member walking around there, but it seemed like nothing else was happening. So I'm not not quite sure. Uh, I guess we're waiting here. for word from on high, but I don't know what happened. Well, unless someone did DC and it didn't didn't show up on our end. I mean, I suppose. The pretenders took what they had. I mean, they, they took the opportunity, certainly. You yeah, no, they, unless they didn't see... Either they came because of DC that we couldn't see, or they just kept going, and they were just probably slightly confused when I was shooting at them. Yeah, I'm, I guess I really don't have anything Alfred. to comment on. I'm really not sure what happened there, I suppose. We'll just and it looks like word. we're just advancing to the next game? Because we're, yeah. we're stuck in the next stage. We, we might just go on to the next game, which would be... Yeah. Well, I mean, they haven't said anything yet. Ah. Uh, oh, one of their teammates was inactive, but wasn't there. Was there? Well, wasn't got inactive for long enough to DC. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Well, I suppose while we wait for we're this asking to be, for a redo. Uh, yeah, while we wait for this to be sorted out, whether we'll um see whether we get a redo or not oh well, we can look forward at uh to our next match which is um well the last um map in the set and the last map in the pool stage is tower control and inkblot art academy now we did see tower we uh excuse me we did see clam blitz on inkblot a little bit earlier but i believe that tower, tower control just plays very differently especially with the location of those checks of those checkpoints we will be getting a redo. I'm seeing that just now in help from the one of the TOs. We are going to have a D. We are going to see that match again, and I'm interested to see how it's going to go. Because even though there was a D, it did seem like Precarious, precarious Pretenders' uh, um, aggression really paid off and let them get steamroll straight through even with the when their opponents were playing. But... Yeah, I mean, we saw the jellies go two down very early on in the match. So yes, the rushing down and just the, the very nice aggression and mechanics coming out of the pretenders really, really paying off there. So I suppose we'll have to see if that, that continues to help them. Now, well, they're still in the rooms, so I believe getting a redo immediately, but I'm not sure. Yep, right now we're just waiting for it to be sorted out. All right, well. looks like we're starting up. And we're just be waiting for teams to ready up, and it's going to be the same weapon. Let's just see so we should be getting started right away. I mean, if teams would be able to, but... <laughs> yes, if, if one remembers to hit the A button, we should be getting started very shortly. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, we've pretty much said all that <laughs> there is to say about clan blitz on Perona Pit. You really don't see those large areas off to the side being used. I mean, in, in the call-out maps on Spikebot, they're literally called useless just because, you know, maybe people go down there to farm armor and specials, but you know, that's about it. Really nothing else. No, there's no all the fast ones. There's no objective down there, you know, except maybe... I don't even know if clams spawn down there. Like, there's really just not much to be had from going down there, and that's why people don't go there. So if progressive pretenders do move fast enough, what they try to do is get via the flanks and get some cheeky and get some jumps in if they wanted to try because i've seen that done sometimes if you sneak in via useless you can get a flank or something but i don't think they'll go for that and they'll opt to be a little less risky oh yeah yeah i, I want to see something like and that. i'm surprised Captain. people are still waiting to start i don't know. so yeah, if we I'm do see an odc or if someone afk match will just go to whoever wins it. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunately, only one uh, DC replay allowed, and because... Yeah, so I don't know why they waited the whole time they're already up, because it, unless they're waiting for the team to get back, because they can't change their weapons. So unless they were... Unless they're, or if they were debriefing to try to figure out what they're going to do. Yeah. Oh, well, Which well... Which valid if you need to take a second, so... Yeah. Well, I, I guess... Game, um, take, take, take two! <laughs> Slam Blitz on Piranha Pit! Um, and... Again, uh, same weapons that we were commenting on earlier. So I do want to see though whether the pretenders will go for the same, you know, pretty That's much rush down not a foil. Huh. aggression. Huh? I did the, the first time. Yeah. So, and we see already the try going into useless for that flank. Uh, but we have to see if it pays off. Dooley is already getting taken out by the 96 gal, and then the rollers out. Gal does get taken out as well by the bamboo. Uh, but already two power clams on the side of. Uh, believe that's the pretenders two going down they do get one in though and not even 30 seconds into the game they are now three down losing that second power clan but such a fast first push out of them yes and the first power clan did get taken down they did a great job dodging the bamboo now the 96 is gonna push the bamboo back and though jamming jellies do have a chance to uh continue to push up and try to get a push and they've got the specials for it they're just sort of they've got Precarious Pretenders push back, but they're getting fired upon going up they, they go one down, the other two go the three down on the side of Precarious Pretenders. It's now or never for Jamming Jellies, but they only just get a climb. They throw it up to one of the teammates, but that teammate isn't able to score because it looks like a bomb came in. So there's Ray coming out, but the, they just don't... They just didn't move. Yeah, it, like, it looks... They, they it waited did... way too long. And yeah, I guess that should just be yeah. the one. They unfortunately, yeah, didn't seem to be able to take a complete advantage of that opportunity. Although, another three down situation for Pretenders, and we see now they are moving in. The K Duelist does get taken out, but they get that one in. They're trying to get the second power in. They do that 60 for them, and they do take the lead with that. Now, two down with the Roller and the Duelies both out of commission. Bamboo trying to do everything they can to get in. They do have another power in their hands, but unfortunately, not going to be able to get that in. As Precarious Pretenders has all members alive, now going to take out that uh, heavy, I believe. Um, and so Precarious Pretenders trying to set up for another push here, the Splashdown coming out of the 96, just so that they can stay alive. God, this, the, 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 the range on the killing power out of the 96 is being showcased so well here as they get yet another pick. Yes, they seem to get someone to run back and get the pity and jump in. Or not even, they pass Clems really well, getting enough. Okay, they've got a lot of Clems online as well, so they, so they can get them in. Yeah, they're gonna skip the lead, they got the ball ready. They can hold this lockout for a while if they want. And if any one member dies, as long as they keep throwing cleanses, they can just grab the pity. And it's all the way down to 22, actually. Okay. The bomb rush coming out is going to keep the jamming guys from being able to push in at all. And then they finally managed to clean it up with the bamboo and the thing down on. But the size of the Paris Pretenders already has two more power cleans. If they get those in, they'll accept their lead, but they go two down. With both power clean carriers taken out. Yeah, we now have Jellies finally going around, getting their feet under them, being able to get some clams. The Heavy is very aggressively pushing up here, but unfortunately gets taken down by a flank from the 96. The 96 just has been getting so many picks, using their, their full kit to their advantage. Again, another jump down, splash down. Unfortunately, does get taken out by multiple members, and that's two down for the Pretenders right now. Uh, the Cade Dooley is with a good amount of clans under them, and, one of, and the Baller at the ready with one of their teammates 
having a power climb, but unfortunately their team is now two down with the Pretenders having respawned and gotten back into the action. We have one minute and 38 seconds left and counting 60 to 22, and right now the Jellies are not in a good spot at all. Yes, so the Flinzer gets a nice pick of their vertical flick, and they're popping a bomb rush in their oath. Oh, there's a jump coming in, but the bomb rush, the Flinzer misses parking under them. Clems are coming in, they are going to extend their lead and they, they don't quite, they have the chance to KO if they haven't gone down. But now they're forced to be down. So the 96 does get a pick, another pick. And it's a 3 on 3 situation with the members of Precarious Pernodes just responding, responding, but they're going to have time to get back in. Especially with the slower movement of the jellies. So when the other one goes down, they've got the specials, the jellies need to move. That's they've got so many all clams. these specials. And they've got 30 clams, yeah. But they just... In comes the jump, but the they get defense. taken out. Yeah, and they couldn't an angle anyway, so it so, looks like the power clan bounced off. So that means they only, despite all that they built up, the precarious pretenders do an extremely good job of defending and surviving all those specials despite much pressure. With and after the specials were exhausted, very quick, take that uh, clean up of the jamming jellies. Now, Splashman coming out. Nice. Oh, it's a three down to that side of Curious Pretenders. They, there's one more chance for the Jamming Jellies to make it, but there's a. There's something blocked them temporarily, but they've got a climb in. They've got another climb coming through. If they can just get a few more climbs in, they can make it. They get them 30, but they need six more climbs, but they look like they only, they've only got two, and the Jellies are. I mean, the Pretenders are in a place to defend. There's a jump coming in, the jump's gonna camp, and that's the game. That's the set for the precarious pretenders there still is one more game for the jellies to try to win yeah a really nice latched last ditch last last ditch push excuse me for the jellies right there but unfortunately the defense from the pretenders just held up against like everything that the jellies threw at them and they were just able to hold out until the basket closed yes now we'll be moving on to inkblot tower which i believe we were discussing Yes, ink, yep, ink Lot Tower, the final match of our pool stage, the final match of round four. The, the, the way the checkpoints are placed on this map makes the checkpoints basically choke points themselves. Like, once you get past the second checkpoint, which is true for a few other maps as well, the, the, it, it gets really snowball-y, and the tower can move very, very quickly from there, but it is very difficult to get past that checkpoint. I don't... I'll be interested to see how the, uh... If they keep running heavy bamboo, it's not just yeah, another, it's another cramped map, so it's going to be good for the precarious, the precarious pretenders to be able to push down the back lines that are fairly exposed unless they back up. Yeah, we saw the heavy really, like, they would be trying to focus on a member of pretenders and then some another member would just take them out from the side. Like you said, those two members of jellies are really vulnerable to getting rushed down if they stay on that, especially... Uh, if they're, you know, just kind of sitting in mid and then somebody else comes out from the side on a map like Inkblot, where the mid is so open and exposed. Especially with the style that the uh, Precarious Pretenders are bringing right now, they have such, you know, like we've been saying, a, an aggressive rushdown comp. And so, if the Jellies are not able to speed up their play or slow down the Pretenders, really, they're just going to get run over like we saw in the last game. Their current I think the Flingza might have helped slow down the so bring that out again. The world check for paint forces in the paint so i think that would be good if i bring that though i think the bamboo heavy it would ordinarily on longer maps if we had something like anchovy or mako be very bad for the pretenders because they couldn't reach. yeah they just can't but on reach maps them. that we're seeing they can reach because everyone is so accessible that the back lines will be perching that the back lines a large disadvantage because they can't keep speed they're just dead yeah, some matches, uh, matches, some maps really don't have that many perches for backlines to be on, and Inkblot is one of them. We are, oh, that is double, double charger charge. coming out. The uh, combination of an E-leader and a bamboo, as well as a swap to not 79. That's a respawn punisher bamboo. Which oh boy, That's I mean, it. jellies are pulling out all the stops in this last match here. And they I... already get a pick getting one, getting knocking out. Oh yeah. Um, now the soda gets taken out, so one down on both sides, and 
just honestly having that E leader with so much range, so much pressure, but also so much vulnerability to getting rushed down. You see Sovelis on the Keisha here, rushing into Palat and taking out uh, one of them. That's three down for the Jellies right now. Full wipe as um, already uh, pretenders are past that first checkpoint and barreling towards the second. You see the Tri Slosher using that small step to their advantage and coming up with one of their teammates onto this overlook that ordinarily would be under the control of the Jellies. Already, Pretenders is past checkpoint two, and that's two down for the Jellies yet again. The Bamboo does get a pick on there, but that's only one down, and it might not be enough. Again, Bamboo, they're trying so hard. They're doing everything they can, but they just cannot reach, and then they're forced to deal with another member, the Tri Slosher, coming up on them. We are so close to just a 100 to OKO. Okay, oh for the pretenders not the uh yes the pretenders and it they look like they're going to be stopped at one wow so one tv2 they could oh. theoretically get this yes so, they, they theoretically could but now it's over in the jump camp but it looks like we were talking about how <sighs> jellies has to slow down pretenders or speed up and they didn't speed up bring out the double the leader could have helped slow down because it can get from, hit them from so far away that it isn't necessarily probable to rush down. But in the end, the pretenders were just like, okay, guess we'll go faster. So, and they moved so fast. Especially the K-Shot, it's doing a lot of work. Pushing all yeah. the way up into their, nearly into their base in the first minute. Yeah, the towers reset all the way back to mid, but a push to one is is just so big, especially in not even in the first two minutes of the game. Now we have three minutes left, and the bar has been set so, so high for the Jellies right now. They literally have to KO this match in order to win it, and they are now trying, trying to set up for it, but the Neo Splash is coming in, taking out the Knot, taking out another, taking out three. Wow, they're going for the quad. They get the quad. Nice. Wow, so it's impressive out of them. Dodging every yeah. single... And that's just... the other struggle. Yeah, um, look at how far up the K shot is are having, already. Is they have no paint. Like, they've got two chargers and not a... Which is some, especially... But compared yeah. to a zap, prime, a shot, and a splash, they have yeah. next to no paint. And it's a 2v4. And we see pretenders pushing like there's not enemies there. And it's almost like the... And they're still go okay, they finally get taken out time, like, Jellies weren't even able to engage Sal. Yeah, like you said, I, I feel like the double charger decision, they could have been going for the range to, you know, just outrange because they have, I believe, the longest range weapon on their team just is, is an end zap, but really, they... They just aren't able to keep up with the speed that pretenders are moving at. We just keep seeing this, but like all of these weapons are very, very fast paced rush down weapons that we are seeing. And already Sobless on the K shot just going so deep into Jelly's base. Unfortunately, immediately get, well, very, very quickly getting taken out by the charger. But that's such a good distraction, you know, forcing uh, Jellies to devote their resources then instead of going on, a, uh, on objective. Finally, Jellies are getting some points on the board. One minute and 18 seconds left to go as Pretenders has gone three down, but now they are respawning, getting their resources back together, and we're going, they're, I, I, they're likely tries painting for armor, and they're probably going to be coming out in full force very soon. Yeah, they got some missiles coming out. There is the ink chip. The ink chip? Getting much, I don't think. That jump is gonna get camped, and the shots are gonna move in. And yep. all the front lines are gonna move in, and the chargers are gonna be in a really bad situation. This is where, that column's good for defense having two chargers. Problem is, on offense, they got pretty far, impressive. Because they got enough picks in the flash and that is Two chargers in a map like this, try to protect them. If you don't have dead on aim, you're gonna get rushed down. It's gonna be over very quick. Yeah, they're already three down again for the jellies with the the bamboo here being the last one left to defend. We have 27 seconds left in the match and already the pretenders are on yet another push just on the Jellies plat and keeping the pressure up, not letting them breathe. Jellies cannot afford to be on defense right now, but they are still three down yet again with the, again, the bamboo being the only one and being surrounded by members of pretenders. And again, so close, pretenders are just right on a KO here. They're going to be trying to get it before the timer gets down. A fight over the tower right now. And I don't know whether they KO'd before the timer end, but either way, that is the game for precarious pretenders right there. And that was just such a dominant, assertive game for them. They had control pretty much the entire match. Yeah, like we said, the double treasure call just missed. 
And then we see look a at that. Look at those KAs. Absolutely taking apart the other two. Wow. Yes, and I believe that's going to be the end of. It. We do have an yep. announcement soon, actually. Yeah. Uh, would you like to do the honors, or shall I? Go ahead. All right. Um, so yes, as Cork has said, we do have an announcement. Um, Checkpoint One is going to be having their third tournament very soon. So if you are looking to get more experience at a casual level or a lower level, you can grab your team, grab a couple friends, or you can even sign up alone. There's both team and individual uh, signups. And you can join Checkpoint One for their third tournament taking place on Saturday, May 15th. If you choose to sign up as a free agent on your own, Off the Dial will be helping assemble teams just like for the tournament you're watching right now. And as you've seen, Off the Dial has very good team construction. So don't yes. wait though, because signups for teams close on May 9th at midnight ET and at 4 a.m. UTC. Signups for free agents close exactly four days earlier on May 5th at the same hour. And Cork and I here will actually be helping, um, helping run that tournament. So you'll see us around there too. Yes, we will have a very nice bright green world. And I believe that is everything you can find, or oh, self processing but you can find me at Strange Twitters, basically. Find Cater at Cater. Feeling my little bit for me to self promote myself, but yes, um, I will also be. Uh, yeah, I, you know, uh, you can find me on Twitter. That's where Quark said um, I promo a lot of the stuff that I commentate there, so you can see me running around on other people's streams. But yes, that is going to do it for the both of us. Um, that is the end of pools, and we are going to be moving into Top Cut shortly with a couple of new commentators. So do not leave, just stick around, and in a few minutes you will hear some new voices. Goodbye all, and I yes. hope you have a great rest of your day. And it was a pleasure commentating.
And we're back with um, semifinals of It's Dangerous to Go Alone. We're currently streaming um, Luigi's Lasagnas and Monsoon Monsters. We certainly are. Uh, this is going to be winners semifinals. I don't know why I said winners. It's a single elimination tournament. <laughs> uh, so I guess loser semifinals is just uh, you versus like a bag of chips as you sit back and watch finals. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm I'm Rose and I'm joined today by Alias. Hey! And did I get it right? Yeah. <laughs> and we're on the first game here is Splat Zones on Mako Mart. What are your thoughts? I I love Mako Mart. It's my personal favorite. I, I also think that this is just the best map in the game. It's I really think for a lot everything. of people, it's it's a fan favorite because people think it's good on every mode and not a lot of maps can brag that they're the best on every mode. Yeah, I th I'll, honestly, I think it's like Mako Mart, Inkblot's pretty good on all modes. Uh, the Reef, the Reef is pretty solid on all modes. I mean, Inkblot Rainmaker is kind of eh, and even yeah. Mako Rainmaker. But I don't, I don't think we count Rainmaker when we're looking at good math. Yeah, that's that's more of a, a knock on Rainmaker. I have a uh, I have a teammate who really does not like Rainmaker. Uh speaking of which, I forgot to post the link. So, uh, give me one second. But anyways, we're just gonna go ahead and uh, just gonna go ahead and jump right into this game one. We've got Luigi's Lasagnas taking on the Monsoon Monsters. Ooh, look at these comms. And a charger on rain, on, um, oh wait, this is zones. I thought it was clan blood. Yeah. <laughs> but good. double shot coming out from the uh, Luigi's Lasagnas, which is a quite interesting comp to be honest. Yeah, meanwhile, Monsoon Monster is going with sort of a more traditional comp. You see uh, a trade coming out from the Custom Hydra and the 96 Scout. So, uh, outside of that end zap, neither team would have armor for a bit. But that end zap is going to go ahead and provide armor. Uh, Luigi's Lasagna is going to try and take back the zone here. But Monsoon Monster seems to have a very good grip over the zone right now. They have a really good grip over mid as well, and they're pressuring their backline Fosh really well, and they have to jump out. But And they take out pretty much all of the members, I think, except for Wumi, who's still fighting it in mid. Oh, and they just go down. Um, Looks like Fosh is trying to take the zone alone. And... Oh, and unfortunately, CO comes in and helps Zimius with the zone. Yeah, I mean, the tournament is called It's Dangerous to Go Alone for a reason. With something like this, you're not really going to be able to take the zone by yourself, especially with that bumper in the middle. Uh, that is you see, true. Luigi's Lasagna actually does manage to capture the zone, though. And with four players up, they're going to try and hold on to this for as long as possible. Make it a little bit harder for uh, Monsoon to get back into this game. Looks like Wumi's trying to keep their plat, and... They might be able to find the pick here on Zinnius, and they do get the trade, which is really good. Um, that's a lot of paint from the... Um, that was a good mob. shot by the inkjet right there. I did not that think that they were going to be able to uh, get that pick, but they shoot oh just my. straight down. And just like that, Monsoon has control of the zone again. And looks like they're looking for a split push to take care of the zone, but it looks like Dre will get taken out. And Craners will also get taken out, which is really unfortunate for the lasagna. Moment. Yeah, um, Luigi's lasagna is having a hard time finding their way back into the zone. You see the nice little danger icon pop up. They're starting to have a little bit more of a fight over mid. Uh, we do see armor coming out from the Hydra, but Monsoon Monster is able to take control of the zone again. As we see and two go down like on the side Kino of the And it looks like is Fosh, and Fosh has to jump out yet again. They, The lasagnas pop an armor and are able to take out two of the members of the Monsoon Monsters. But looks like Venus gets a, the pick on the end zap. Yeah, another pick going down, however. Uh, so that will be two down on the side of the lasagnas. You see another trade coming out in the middle, I think my uh, stream video gets a little bit crunchy every now and again. But, uh, 
Yes, you are seeing right, and it looks like Xenius pops their bubbles and gets two people right off the bat to claim the zone. And yeah. three go down on the side of the lasagnas. Yeah, the combination know, of the bubbles rough. and the inkjet definitely going to make sure that it's a little bit harder for Luigi's lasagnas to actually get back into mid. Uh, ten of missiles coming out, but I don't know how much that's going to help, especially with the reactive ink armor. And Luigi's Lasagna's needs to take control of this zone as soon as possible, or they run the risk of getting KO'd. Looks like Wumi loses the T-Tech 1v1, and now... Oh, and Craner... Craner's takes uh, the pick on... And... Oh, the game's over! <laughs> yeah. Ten of Missiles That's weren't enough to neutralize it, and uh, yep. the rest of the team couldn't quite get there in time. So that will... Uh... That will be game one going in favor of uh, Monsoon Monsters. Yep. And you're seeing that they didn't really depend on their armors all that much. They more so depended on the picks, which is really good to see in zones and in this game because this it's a very armor heavy meta. And usually if you have more armors, it means you win the game. But it's good to see that they were able to overcome the odds. Yeah, especially with the two armor weapons, the NZAP-85, which is the more common armor weapon, and also the Custom Hydra as a backline, fighting a little bit and of extra And especially support. with the Custom Hydra, com like, outclassing the uh, unscoped Charger. Yep. But, Anyways, looks like it's now... Rainmaker on Albacore. Yeah. So, uh, Rose, what are your thoughts on this map? I feel like so, I get to ask you this whenever... because... This is your map list. <laughs> this is my map list. Again. <laughs> and my thoughts on Rainmaker Albacore, the only thing I can think of when I think of Rainmaker Albacore is this one game in Low Ink. Uh, it was Luau. I know the, it was it was a Luau match. I think that and might it have was... been before my time then. Really? It, I think, I think so. it was sometime. It was sometime last year when Luau yeah. won Low Ink. Uh, yeah, I joined in, I think the first low ink I saw was January of this year. And I do remember yeah, seeing highlights so, of a Luau match on New Albacore Hotel. So it might be the same one that you're thinking of. It might be, but it was a famous game because it there was a very low count until like the last, I think overtime actually. It looks like they're pulling out and unscoped charger yet again looks like they're flipping so the monsoon monsters are pulling out a custom hydra and the uh lasagnas are pulling out the unscoped charger here yeah we see the hero charger coming out i can't see much else um but yeah i i got to bear witness to a lot of just absolutely insane Rainmaker games earlier today. I was working production for Dapple Productions Pride event, and mm -hmm. the amount of like last second comebacks was very stunning for a four team tournament. Oh, Anyways. and looks like looks like uh, the lasagnas will take out the Rainmaker before they see Lumi's flank. But Lumi fl Lumi's flank is still successful as. They are able to take out most of the team, and it looks like Zimius here is forced to back out or fight. And I don't know if fighting. Oh, they take out one of the one of the lasagnas and are helping Wumi try to get this pick on, or helping Theo trying to get this pick on Wumi, which they succeed. Yeah, nice pick by the charger there from the uh, from the lasagnas. They're still down a bit, trying to work to get back into this game. We did see the Stingray come out, provide a little bit of help at shutting down that last push. Uh, stream got crunchy again. Yeah. <laughs> and looks like, I didn't notice before, but uh, the Monsoon Monsters are running a Vanilla Squeezer for Stingray rather than the Bubble Squeezer, which is a really interesting pick in my opinion. You don't really see many, many Stingray weapons other than the vanilla charger or the custom jet sculpture, which is kind of justified heavy, because the Stingray is a very oh and the heavy spotling. Uh which is kinda of justifiable because it's more of a backline special. Yeah. 
Uh, there are a lot of just random weapons in this game that have Stingray. Like the Vanilla Squeezer, I think the Vanilla Clash has Stingray as well. It does, it does, and, and the, the Vanilla uh, Sloth machine. Right, and the 52 Deco. I think the 52 Deco is like the most infin in infamous frontline that has a Stingray. Yeah, I, it is a gal after all. That Anyways, is true. You still see just a lot over middle. Uh, Currently, it looks like the Monsoon Monsters are slowly starting to press up uh, a little bit more. Um, they have very good control over mid, and if they can get maybe one or two picks, they'll be able to push it further, but it looks like Craners is going to flank and shut down the push entirely. And that's three down on the side of the Lasagnas, so... Or three down on the side of Monsoon, so the Lasagnas are going to start pushing in. They delayed the push a little bit, and that gave... The, that gave the monsters a little bit of time to respawn. Uh, not sure if that's going to come back to hurt them, because you can't see. But. And it looks like it does. Uh, the monster monsters are coming up from that top part near their spawn, and it looks like they'll be able to deny this mid-push completely. And with the positioning on the grating right there, I think this is also going to be a reset, but uh, it turns out, I think they're going to manually reset it. Yes, they they do reset it manually, and they pop an armor, trying to push back in. But it looks like the lasagnas are going to take it towards the left, and the stingray takes them out, which is quite unfortunate. Yeah, but lasagnas three go on. down on the side of the monsters, so they still have a chance to push if they can get enough people in. Trying to trying to go up as far as possible. Ends up getting taken out by Splat Bomb. Just 1v1 at this point. And, uh... Looks Sio, like Sio I, is yeah. able to t to shut down the push completely. Yeah. Get the map all to themselves for a little bit. Take back mid. Try and make it a little bit easier for the rest of their team to go ahead and come back into the center. 1v1 at mid. Or 2v1. And Sio looks like he's backing up because he sees both trainers and Rumi. The lasagnas are going to have to push soon if they want to secure the lead, but you know, it's Rainmaker, so they could probably push during overtime and get a lucky wipe, and then that'll be just game, so who knows. Yeah. Good job by the Charger to go ahead and deny the inkjet landing. Uh, it looks like the lasagnas are going to try and push forward a little bit, but again, just delaying the push. Looks like they're forcing the push, and it looks like they'll have to take out the Hydra if they want the range advantage. But they lose the Rainmaker to Zimius, and that's game. Yeah, I would have liked to see a little bit more, like... I would have liked to see more organization when it came to the pushes on the side of the Lasagnas. It seems because, like they were know, having a hard time getting out of the Especially in Rainmaker, yeah. especially in Rainmaker, it is dangerous to go alone. And on Albacore, it's dangerous to go alone on that mid-bridge. I feel like on Albacore, it's just dangerous to go anywhere. <laughs> that is true. If you have, if there is a backline looking at you, it probably is going to kill you. Because there's not much place to hide on Albacore. Well, anyways, uh... If I remember correctly, this is best of five, which means that yes. uh, the monsters could, are going to have yeah. to win one more, or the lasagnas are going to have to uh, s reverse them. So next stage is clam blitz on starfish main stage. What are your thoughts on starfish clams? This one's really interesting because it feels like it's a very segmented map, like. Once you get to a certain segment, it's kind of hard to get dislodged from that segment, but it's also, like, really hard to push in. So if the lasagnas or the monsters are able to, like, dominate control of mid, it's going to be really hard for the opposing team to actually get back in without, like, a crafty flank. But on Clam Blitz, one flank could put your entire team out of position, and that could open up your basket to some unfortunate results com coming out from the other team. The pit area under the basket can be one of the hardest to hold in in this um, on this map during clams, especially. But yeah. looks like the 
monster monsters are gonna stick with the hydra and it looks like the lasagnas are gonna ditch the idea of a back lane completely and oh seal gets an immediate 2k on the lasagnas possibly denying them mid yeah it seems like not many changes i don't think there are any changes coming out from the uh the monsters, which is interesting because I thought they would have switched out the uh, vanilla squeezer for a foil so that they had the bubbles for the push in, but I guess they like the idea of having the splash walls and stingray. I guess so! I don't know. Oh, and looks like Lutzi will be able to throw the ball so that the ball doesn't land within the water, which is a really good play by them. Um, lasagnas are able to get mid and hope maybe if they can make a clam they'll be able to start a push. Yeah. But they're gonna have to get their the, mon the monster's street area first. Not gonna lie, I'm kind of expecting their brush to try and rush in and then later on for the lasagnas to play hard defense afterwards. Uh, we do see the ink armor coming out. The special's kind of just coming very staggered from the lasagnas, which for something like, like Clam Blitz, I would have liked to see a little bit more organization with the specials. Brush finding a crafty pick up there. There are a lot of clams in the area, and it looks like they can have enough to get a power clam if they want. Oh, the flank works, but the flank is getting flanked and is getting flanked. That's a lot yeah. of flank. <laughs> yeah. Flankception. And it see... looks like they get two power clams in, so yeah. they're two able... Two power clams, two regular clams, and we're just going to see the Splattershot Jr. try and hold back a little bit. Try and not give up met, uh, control of mid while the rest of their team respawns. Unfortunately, three people are on them, so they might- they're not quite able to keep mid. Um, but hopefully they will be able to- Oh, the monsters have taken control of most of the clams in the area. With two power clams, but looks like the brush will get two people anyways. I don't have to take your word for that. <laughs> <laughs> and I did, see, uh, I did see one of the power clams going down, the one held by Kyo or Sio. Uh, going and it right. looks like the lasagnas will be able to hold mid. And I think their slightly faster comp is really working for them. Yeah, especially I... because all the weapon, all of their weapons are painting decently well, so they're holding areas really well. Yeah, I like the switch to the to the K Dynamo as opposed to uh, trying to rock with the more traditional backline weapons that we saw from the games one and two. Uh, it seems like this one's working out a little bit better. They're able to cover a little bit more ground and not struggle quite as much with taking control mid. As we see Co lose another two v one to the to the Kenza Dynamo roller, uh, and Louise Lasagna is gonna try and start pushing up again. And Wumi finds the pick on both Sio and Zimias. So, I don't know, the Lasagnas could find another push here. And it looks like they do, they make the ball in. But let's see, pops their Stingray so they could be denying this push altogether. And yeah. two Booyahs come out from the side of the Lasagnas. Yeah, we only this see one go game. down. Yeah, we see one go down, four power clams in the area, as well as a jump in. I don't think they're going to have enough to KO right now, especially with uh, one of their members going down. There's a few more clams in the area. The brush might take it. They no, go down with quite, four, but four, four is a left. very good lead, especially on starfish clams. Yeah, monsters trying to find a way back into this one. They have control of mid. It's just they haven't been able to do anything with it yet, as we do see the, the Hydra go down. That's just going to be one less teammate to work with. And it looks like Sio's gonna try to go for the flank, and he gets Wumi, and hopefully he'll be able to do something with this. And he gets Fosh as well? I don't know, the mo monsters can push with this. Looks like they only get one ball in for now. They have another one in the area, but I'm not sure if they're gonna be able to get it in. I haven't heard any, uh, I haven't heard any noises like that, so I don't think they did. And the barrier is going to shut. They don't have a power clam, so this might... Yeah, this will be game. game. And the lasagnas take game three. 
Still on match point, but at the very least, they do have a little bit more momentum going into the rest of the set, trying to build on that reverse sweep. Uh, they do have one game to work with, and they kind of, they seem like they were starting to figure out what they wanted to do with the games. But we'll have to see how they implement those uh, those strategies in this next game. Mm -hmm. Next game is going to be on Tower Control Wahoo World. Which can be a tricky map to... Um, can be a tricky map to push on because you really have to get past those that first checkpoint especially. And it can be very hard to get past that first checkpoint. Yeah, it's it's going to be hard. I would expect to see the Hydra try and take advantage of their range. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we still saw a, a Dynamo Roller. It seemed like that one was working out much better for them compared to the other backline weapons that we saw coming out from the Lasagnas. Wahoo World is a very good map for Chargers, so I wouldn't be that surprised if if they if we saw Chargers on both sides. Um. Fair. But a Hydra would also be a really good decision to make here. But... Seems like the Lasagna's are taking a little bit of time to decide what comp they want to go with. Uh, maybe and debating over that time. usage of backline. But yeah, we're going to go ahead and get right into game four on Wahoo World. Tower control. Still match point for the monsters, but Lasagna's with a little bit of momentum. Honestly, if they take it into game five, that would be re really, really interesting to see. And it looks like they're going with a Stingray from the Squeezer, and they're sticking with that Hydra Splatling. And it looks like, for the most part, the Lasagnas are sticking with their with their Dynamo. Yeah. I feel like part of this uh, is just the fact that all of these players have been playing with each other for such a short amount of time. It's sort of just best to stick with what you know as opposed to trying to maybe put something together with a team that you're not really familiar with. Uh, but we do see uh, Casual find a nice crafty pick on the uh, on one of the monsters. But unfortunately, they're going to go down to the Squeezer, and it looks like they're starting to push forward a little bit, but they will be shut down by the Booyah. And as two go down on the side of the Lasagnas, hopefully the monsters will be able to get more than more than this amount of points on the board and it looks like they're a little bit cautious to push right now especially with uh dre and posh sharking that bottom right corner and it looks like they'll be able to take both of them out good job to find the, the necessary picks uh they are going to go or the squeezer will go down to Wumi on the k52 gal uh, and it looks like they won't they quite won't find the checkpoint here but since everyone on the monsters have gone down, it is now time for the lasagnas to make make their push now. And it looks like the monsters haven't quite gotten back in yet, so this yeah. could be fairly big. It was an early booyah bomb coming out from Wumi, and we do see two more go down on the uh, on the side of the monsters. Wumi trying to dodge the stingray, but I don't know if they'll be able to, and they won't. No. Nope. Uh, as the monsters don't, or the lasagnas don't quite take full advantage of the uh, of the opportunity that the monsters gave them. Looks like Fosh is in the funny spot where he's going to shark there for the tower. Gets the pick on the Hydra. <sighs> Every time I see that funny spot being utilized, a part of my soul dies. Yeah. But the mon the monsters will find the checkpoint this time and get a couple points in through it. 2v2 members super jumping back to the to the rest of their teams. Looks like they're going to send two up the wall right or three up the wall right there, trying to get the jump on the uh, on the monsters. No kills. Oh, the Hydra does go down. Uh, but for the most part, not. Looks like Theo is all work. alone, and Wumi gets the pick on them. Pops their booyah a little bit early, but I think that was more. To scatter. Yeah. is able to scatter the monsters fairly well. I think that was more in response to the Stingray coming out from the Squeezer, trying to negate it, or at least mitigate its effects a little bit. Uh, and it looks we... like they get most of the checkpoint. Yeah. Unfortunately, most of the checkpoint isn't going to help. Getting past that first checkpoint will help a lot, but... No, but with all the members of Monsoon just coming back from spawn, 
they will be able to secure this checkpoint, which is huge on this map. It looks see? like it looks like the monsters will be able to clear this out though. Hopefully, if the junior doesn't come back to bite them. Which it won't. Sorry but the that. junior did get get enough time to get out everyone back in mid. And it looks like the dynamo is DC. I well, can't tell. To me, it looks like the dynamo is still up, but there's a chance. No, they've DC. <laughs> I guess my stream is a little further behind. I think the stream behind. is a little bit delayed, but yeah. it is past 2 minutes and 30 seconds, so I don't think they'll be able to get a replay on this one. And everyone goes down on the side of the lasagnas. They lose the lead. Maybe they can push in back in, but it looks like the monsters have a little bit too much momentum to keep it going. Yeah. Bubbles providing a nice bit of cover right there. Uh, Hydra on the tower. I don't think that the uh, I don't think that the lasagnas are going to be able to come back from this one. That's an unfortunate that's, way to. That's to an unfortunate loss. Yeah. The DC probably really made the difference because the Dynamo is very good at area control. Yeah, and especially not having that Booyah to rely on. Mm-hmm. So, the, uh, the monsters will take game four and the set win. Unfortunate circumstances surrounding it, but I guess that's just a we take those moment. All right, and looking, looking at the other games in the set, it... Well, no games have been reported between the Krusty Krabs and the I know for a fact that it was 1-1 one, one at one point. Okay, then let me refresh my page. It might well, just be me. Well, I know that because uh, DJ M asked about it in oh, okay. the uh, chat. Shout out to the TOs, by the way. Plus yeah, shout out for to getting all this Lepto. Yeah. I may bully Lepto a lot, but they're really doing good work here. It's, it's Don't like, tell Lepto I said that, it, though. It's bullying out of a place of love. I guess. Maybe. <laughs> it's bullying out of a lack of dislike. <laughs> Alright. Uh, so, unfortunately, you're going to have to get to uh, experience what I'm seeing, because uh, we're going to also bring... DJM in for grands to right, record like that one. Exit the lobby. Yep. Uh, but I don't know. I don't know how to feel about that semifinals match. It kind of feels. It kind of feels like that could have been a really cool reverse sweep, yeah. but it just it they didn't get the chance because of the DC. But TC yeah. Wahoo's a very very hard mat map yeah. for tower control. It also looks like the other semifinals match ended in a 3-1 as well, with Krusty Krabs taking it over Incredible Isopods. So, we're going to be going against the, the Monsoon Monsters. We'll be going against the Krusty Krabs in finals. Yeah. Which uh, should happen shortly. It's, uh, there's only one letter separating the two. And I don't think either of them wants to wants to find out what that is. Because that would mean taking the L. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I'm gonna go. <laughs> okay. No, but... <laughs> You're kicked off the commentator staff. <laughs> Alrighty. Anyways, uh, grand finals. Uh, is this a is this is a best of seven or? Is it a best of five? Um, it is a best of five, I believe. Yes, it is. Okay. Both top so, cut rounds are best of five. And we will be starting on TC Wahoo for the memes, for the people. Uh, if you don't know, I made I had a stream on my Twitch channel where we made the map list together. And I had a channel goal where it was this many points for a for tc wahoo and you know what happened <laughs> we got it lepto actually 
donated a lot of the points. <laughs> and I gave a gift sub to those, to the person who donated the last amount of points for it. Nice. <laughs> yeah, gotta love a I little don't... bit of uh, integrity within the uh, within the TO staffs. So because we reached that goal, I had to make Lepto change his code for the bot that makes the map list. <laughs> Not say, what do you mean? And then I saw the the TC Wahoo emote. Yes. We Speaking have a of which, Wahoo. if you want to see the TC Wahoo emote, you should probably join the Off the Dial Discord server. Uh, good place to find tournaments just like this one. Just like the last It's Dangerous to Go Alone. Just like all the ones before it. Uh, and you can and... also find the tournaments here on Off the Dial's Twitch account. Yes. And we do... We like to stream, you guys. We want to get... When we pick people to stream, we stream those teams that haven't been streamed before. So everyone will get an equal shot at being on stream unless the the seating of the tournament in Swiss just doesn't allow for it. But Unless we try to a get really everyone. Bad alphabet pun. Anyways, I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't. I don't. I don't <laughs> want to commentate this alone. I think I stuttered too much. Because you know it is dangerous to go alone. It sure is. I can't believe we just commentated TC Wahoo. And, and we're, we're going commentating. Right... We're okay, going right back here's into- Here's the fun thing. The other set also ended on TC Wahoo. They got that four games true. as well. So that both of these teams know exactly what they're going to do. Because they're, they like, guaranteed they both won TC Wahoo. Yes. So this is just that is... a battle to determine who is better at TC Wahoo. That will is it true. Be the Krusty Krabs, or both will it be the Monsoon both Monsters? Both teams won TC Wahoo, so you're right. It is <laughs> this finals game one. I think it's more important than who wins the whole thing. Who is better at TC Wahoo? The map mode of Off the Dial. I, I feel like that is like that's the. This game is what's going to set the momentum for the rest of the set. If you're not winning TC Wahoo. Statistically, you're not making grand finals. I can't. I can't say anything else other than you're right. <laughs> Good. That's, that's how I play the game. <laughs> and yes, Sky Lepto got cheated out of that stuff, but I also just didn't want to give it to him. All right, uh, we're just waiting it was funny. on. One more player from, I think it's from Monsoon Monsters, uh, or... Yes. No, it isn't. No, yeah, no, no yes. It yeah. Is. Yes, it is. I think it is. It is. Cool. And All right. there they are. So, I'd expect to see a very similar comp coming out from Monsoon Monsters, given that we literally just watched them play this game. Uh. Yes. But I'm not sure what we're going to see out of the Krusty Krabs. Alright. So, oh, I I now have to look at OBS Ninja. Yeah. And it's... It's, it's crispy. <laughs> Welcome to the party. <laughs> it's crispy. <laughs> but looks like everyone on the Krusty Krab... I mean, we can't really talk about the map. We just talked about it for like four minutes. Both teams are ready, quickly, thankfully. <laughs> so, I don't know. Personally, I like TC Wahoo. I like the meme TC Wahoo, but I don't really like the map mode. <laughs> well, you know what I like? Grand Finals. Let's get right into game one. We're seeing an Explosher coming out from the Explosher on tower control. That's a bold pick. As well as and... no backline. We're going to be seeing the vanilla dually squelchers, the custom explosher. Explosher is a backline. Oh, well, I, guess, I guess it's a backline. I see it more as a midline. <laughs> like, it's uh, not, okay. it's not like a charger or a splatling. Like, it, it, it's... I 
mean, like, it's the, it's the back line of sloshers, you know? It's True. That and kind of blah blah if you want to put yeah. blah blah in that category. I, I will, just because but I play with the blah blah like, a lot. I don't- I think that was Theo. Found two picks on the side of the Krusty Krabs. And three go down and they are able to push the tower. Oh my god, this is so crunchy! Yeah. <laughs> and unfortunately, the mm, Krusty Krabs do have control of their pit. So this push won't go too far as three go down on the side of the monsters. Yep. I'm trying to get my colors right. It's all good. You see the uh, the, the crusty crabs here in this nice purplish color, uh, and then the monsoon monsters in what can only be described as green. I don't yes. think there's any debate over whether or not. I don't think I don't think the purple is very debatable either. But yeah. it looks like the crusty crabs will be able like, to get their fish as well, and this time they have control over the monster's court, so hopefully they'll be able to get through this first checkpoint. Yeah. Or at least- Oh, and they take the checkpoint. So... Yeah, we do see three down on the side of the monsoon monsters. The Explosh is still on deck, Baller at the ready. They're probably going to get past the second checkpoint. Um, and it looks like they will. Because the second checkpoint is a lot faster than the first. But... This is a really good push for the crabs because- oh god. It's an unfortunate <laughs> landing spot, uh, landing right on top of the baller. Not sure why the K-52 jumped all the way out. Their, the, their team is still, like, firmly in the game right there. I, they're very close to a Booyah, so they probably That's just want to keep the momentum going with their Booyah bomb. And they're getting jumps in for the rest of their team as well, so... Looking for a pick on uh, a monster coming down from the. Uh... Looks like they they'll pop their booya and just narrowly avoid the bubbles, but will still get taken out by uh, the KJ. You do see three down on the side of uh, the crabs, so look for uh, look for the monster to try like... and go ahead and get past this checkpoint. If they it looks do like it they, they have the ch opportunity to get past the checkpoint, but they're they are gonna have to clear the uh, crab's elbow before they are able to push on through. And looks like they'll be able to do that as well. Yeah, the crab's this going. This could be a very strong push as well. Yeah, the crabs continue to die. Uh, they can't field enough players to stop this lead. The stingray coming out from the squeezer. That uh, somewhat questionable. This, it's not looking so questionable now, right now. Two down on the side of the crabs, and looks like the monsters will be able to take game one. Good job by the monsters. Way to not get psyched out by that early push coming in from the crabs. Uh, Absolutely. I think they learned from their mistake, where in the first push, they didn't really have very good control of the crab's court, which led them to be able to counter push really far because they went four down. And they were able to, well, let's learn from that mistake, stop the push, push back in, take control of everything, and boom, it's done. Next map, Clamblitz on the Reef. Yeah. I feel like the Reef is also one of those maps that's just pretty balanced for everything. Yeah, it's it's a solid map for everything. I, I, do, I don't think I've ever seen anybody be like, oh, I don't want to play this rotation. It has the reef in it. That's that's very true. You know, the other day I saw a rotation. I think it was like, it was tower control, I think. Yeah. Or, when, I mean, it was, the, the point is, it was more a towers and yeah. dome. <laughs> oh, no, I played with a, uh, I played with my team last night, uh, League was, I think it was Tower Control on Moray and Arowana. Oh my god. Oh and my god. Like, three of us were like, oh god, we don't want to play on this. And our blob blobber was just like, oh, yes. <laughs> All right. I think we had a better win ratio. But, anyways, speaking both of win ratio, sticking, both teams do... sticking to a similar comp than before. I think the. The monsters, I want to say, the 
team in blue is yep. going to stick with their same comp because I think it's been working for them for most of the tourney. And they've yeah, gotten I, with it. I don't know if they've switched. I think they had a slightly different comp game one of last round, but I think it's been the same comp since then. Good pick on the inkjet. We do see that the uh, the monsters find a power clam. Gonna just throw it away for a little bit, trying to not attract too much attention to themselves. I do think they go down in the end, though, as the, the crabs have a little bit of a yeah. The crabs have a little bit of an opportunity to push forward. Somebody died. I can't hear who. Uh, it was the Dooley Squelters. So now it's 3v2 on the side of the monsters. Uh, another duel coming out on this, uh, this tree. I don't know who's defending and who's attacking. But I think that was a defense by the crowd. I think that was a defense as well. I think that was the... Uh, and they here. did successfully take them out. They're well, going to deny the bubbles in mid for the most part. And the juniors just... The junior just popped their armor. Yep. And the squeezer goes down. And looks like they'll need to take control of mid if they want to start a push, but the forge does go down as well under their basket. I'm sorry if it sounds... it. I, my commentary is choppy because the video's choppy. <laughs> it is what it is. It is what it is. And they have bubbles at the ready, the monsters do. And they pop them, but unfortunately do get taken out by the Forge, who yeah. just now got their bubbles ready, hopefully for a counter push. Yeah, two did go down on the side of the on the side of the monsters, but it didn't look like there was anything to be done about that. But they do manage to squeak in a power clam, losing their dually sculptures in the process. We see a flank coming in from the from the bottom. They might be able to keep this right. push going, and unfortunately those bubbles come a little bit too late for that though. I don't even know if it was too late. I think they just didn't have the right amount of clams necessary. A little Maybe. bit of a risky inkjet. They're kind of getting crossfired by everybody. We do see a pick go down. Uh, trying to defend. I think the power clam holder died in the process, but they do get a power clam in response. They get Hive one power going to clam in, in, and they get two power clams in, as well as a single clam, which is a great counter push. But unfortunately, they all go down. Crusty Crabs and... trying to figure out where exactly their next push is going to come from. We have the Explosher holding a Power Clam on top. Uh, they but they're do find a, a pick on the Squeezer, which is really essential because they won't have to worry about a Stingray coming out soon. They're having but a little bit of trouble advancing, though. Yeah, they really need to get control of their car in flat. But they do squeeze in a Power Clam just barely before the Stingray comes out. But they unfortunately won't be able to capitalize on that because they just went three down. It looks like two members of the crabs also go down to the T Tech as they're trying to push in even further. Gets a super jump in. That'll be a, ba uh, a barrier break. A couple more claims get tossed in. They're past the penalty points. So this is three big go giveaway. down, unfortunately. So hopefully the. Crabs will be able to take uh, take advantage of this three down situation and paint up mid. Yeah, it looks like they're and trying to rush in as quickly as possible, trying to catch uh, the monsters off guard. Stingray, however, is going to. Stingray is not going to let them do that, and yeah, everyone goes wipe. down. They have 30 seconds left to build up another clam, but it looks like the. Monsters are gonna push in yet again, laying on that pressure thick. Yeah, it's an interesting choice because if you don't get the uh, if you don't get the necessary clams, then that's not gonna be that's gonna give them a free power clam. Uh, it looks like they don't KO in time, but the barrier won't go up yet. They're not gonna have enough for a power clam. They find one at the last second, so. <laughs> the crabs they have, have a little power clip to work with now, but they'll yeah. need to get that map control in order to get that push in. But with their backline going down, I 
this might not look good for the crabs. Yeah. They don't get the push in time. Even if they did, they would have needed 76 total points between the penalty and the regular points to even tie it up. I think that they probably would have needed to get one more power claim on, or one more regular claim on top of that. But that's just not really a feasible amount in overtime. Mm hmm. So the Krusty Krabs on the verge of losing this grand finals. It is match point, you're correct. And we have another tower control map going to be either the decider or the start of a reverse sweep. Tower control Mako Mart. We're back on Mako Mart. Yeah. I have I have no objections from like a spectator. I uh, I like this map as I stated at the start of the last one, but at the same time, it, a little bit of variety is nice, and I think this might benefit uh, both teams. I'm not sure if the Krusty Krabs won on Spot Sense Mako Mart last round. I do know that it was one one at one point, but I don't know whether or not that was a win on. Spot Sense or Mako Mart. But both teams should be at least somewhat familiar with this map. To sort of like know the layout. Not sure if they're going to know what the other team wants to do. But at this point, it's... It's sort of stopped being about feeling out the opposing team. And more about, okay, how do we impose what we want to do? Looks like the... The... <sighs> The crabs will stick with their explosher on tower control yet again. And the and the monsters will just stick with their hydra with their just their regular comp. I don't know. Yeah, with their regular comp. And it looks like the Yes. Uh, we see the Booyah coming out from the K-52, however, they're the only player left. So it kind of goes to waste a little bit as the monsters try and push up a little bit. At least push back in the mid. Excuse me. Uh, not really taking that much of an advantage of that, uh... That opportunity that they had to, like, firmly seize control of the mid. And just like that, the crabs are going to take the tower for a little bit. Monsters take the tower in response. But they both back off as well as they see two of their teammates go down. It's a 2v2 in mid, I believe, right now. And right now, the the monsters are fighting for control of mid. And if they can get it, they can get a, a good push in. But it looks like their backline will go down, which kind of loosen, uh, tightens opportunities for them. Three down on the side of the crabs, and this will be the this will be the monster's opportunity to push forward. Uh, two go down. There's still one on the tower. They're going to get lead off this at the very least. If they can and get past also the, the checkpoint, checkpoint, yeah, they will get past the checkpoint, but they will die to the Ria bomb in the process. And I can't tell if they targeted one person coming up to the right with that. I <laughs> the it looks like the monsters are going to pop their stingray which hopefully will deny this push from the um, crabs but the crabs will pop a booya in response to that and they're at the checkpoint they pop an armor but it looks shaky as if, as whether they're going to get the checkpoint or not. It looks like they don't, and the um, monsters will get control of mid back, and also another push in. You see the T-Tech winning in a brief duel, but then going to die immediately to the splatter shot coming out from the Krusty Krabs. Uh, two, one down still on the side of the monsters so the crabs are going to try and push forward it looks like they have the position to do so as well as the nice booyah bomb coming up uh but we do see them getting driven off the tower and one of the 
one of the members of the monsters actually takes the power in response. So that'll push it back to mid. Oh, three go down on the side of the crabs, and this is the monster's chance to push, get in a really big push, but unfortunately the T-Tech does go down. And... Power in, a, power in a little bit of a weird position where it's kind of stuck in midair. Uh, they do manage to hop back on the tower when it comes down. They get a little bit more, but a lot of members of the monsters go down. It's just the squeezer left on the field right now. They do widen the gap a little bit, which is always good, but at the cost of losing some members, which if the crabs can get in a control of mid and their plat, they'll be able to clear that checkpoint no problem. Another Booyah Bomb coming out from the K-52. They do manage to get past checkpoint one. Uh, having to play against all four members of the monsters though, as well as a Stingray, they're not going to be able to get much further than that. The distance, the, the gap is only four points though. They're going to continue to advance it a little bit more. And looks like all four members somehow get onto the tower and they, they get a wipe on the monsters and are able to take the lead and run with it. Still pushing the tower, still getting those picks. Yeah. Only the Hydra left and that will be game. So the Crabs, not done yet. They will take game three and force this into a game four. Man. That that ending, I was I was convinced that the monsters would take this 3-0. Yeah, it looks like the crabs finally figured out what exactly they wanted to do. They started clicking a little bit more. Uh, the special usage got a little bit better. They were saving it for later in the push as opposed to using it right off the bat. Mm -hmm. uh, more relying just on each other to get the necessary picks. But we will be seeing splat zones for the first time in this finals uh, on Sturgeon Shipyard. Yes. Splat Zone Sturgeon, I would not be surprised if we saw the Explosher again because Sturgeon does uh, favor Sloshers because the zone is a yeah. little bit of a hill. Yeah, but... I, I would expect to see more of a normal Slosher, but the Explosher also makes sense. I think mm -hmm. using the Hydra to look out over mid just with its massive range also makes sense. Uh, yes. honestly, I wouldn't expect to see that many changes. I could see them switching to the foil squeezer as opposed to the V squeezer, if not just because I... Stingray isn't exactly the best for I mean, platforms, but... It isn't, time. but also, they've been sticking to the foil squeezer pretty... Yeah, uh, they did stick with so... it through Clam Blitz. They didn't? They did they, stick with it through. Clan they did. They, yeah, they did. They did stick with it. I thought you said they didn't. Oh, good. <laughs> and yeah. looks like we're going into game four of grand finals of It's Dangerous to Go Alone. Yep. Flat zones on Sturgeon Shipyard. Let's get right into this. And by let's get right into this, I mean let's wait for the buffering to stop. <laughs> looks like they're running. A different comp, actually. Both teams are running the Charger. I think this or, was the no. comp that we saw at Game 1 from uh, Monsoon Monsters. Yes, Maybe. I want to say so. But... Then, uh, it might have been a different Charger, but I don't know. Either way, let's see how they do with the new comp. Currently, it doesn't look like they're doing too poorly. Explosher in a kind of weird spot right now. They're kind of taking advantage of it, using the baller to try and push up. Uh, they will almost neutralize the zone, but not quite. Not Instead, quite, they're go and down because in the they're process. in mid. Because they're in mid, they will get taken out, unfortunately. Two go down on the side of the crabs, and 50 points have already passed for the monsters. Looks like they, the crabs will be able to capture the zone, but for how long? Not, not very. Yeah, not long. There was only one player that was actually in the zone. The inkjet sort of beating a, a poor fate just because of the uh, bad location that they decided to pop it in. It's taken out from above. But 
Looks like they're Booyah going bomb. to pop a Booyah. Onto the yeah. zone, not quite um, neutralizing the zone. Yeah, no, the fire fin goes ahead and pops its suction bomb rush as a, as a response to that. And the zone's gonna stay in favor of the monsoon monsters. Looks like they're getting it down past 30. And this looks like it's almost game. If they can get more picks and paint the zone in time, maybe they'll get it, but it looks like they have a pretty firm hold of the zone. Yeah. And, and that will like be the game. That's game! So, congrats Mon to the Monsoon Monsters. Uh, they, they just won It's Dangerous to Go Alone. Uh, March 2021, that is happening in April. Quote yep. by Lepto. <laughs> Sweet. I would not have questioned it if you just left it as March. Time is irrelevant. No, I had, I had to say that it was March and April because, you know. Time is irrelevant. <laughs> and... Yeah. Congratulations to the Monsoon Monsters. Uh, yeah. You put up a very good fight against... Well, yeah, of course they did. They won. <laughs> and to the Krusty Crab... Or, yeah, Krusty Crabs, who also put up a very good fight against the Monsoon Monsters. Well, that's going to do us do it for us. Uh, Rose, is there anything that you want to plug before we head out? Uh, only the Off the Dial Discord channel. If you want to be a part of a, a tournament like this, all you have to do is sign up alone, and the TOs will take care of the rest. Yep. And it's, it's only dangerous to go alone into the tournament. You, signing up isn't dangerous. Yes. <laughs> so if you want to join the Discord, I hope this command works. There is the Discord channel. And we hope to see you there. Yeah. Uh, as for me, you can find me on Twitter at alias underscore handle. Uh, I'm also going to be commentating another tournament later tonight. But for now, we're actually going to go ahead and send you to another tournament that I hope you stick around for uh, called Ink to Win. So be sure to stick in chat, go ahead and go with the rest of the raid, enjoy the tournament, and we'll see you all next time for It's Dangerous to Go Alone from Off the Dial. Take care, everyone.